Global Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. Very good evening and welcome along to the action here from the Moda Super Series. It's the Friday night session, which means the culmination of Group B, where we'll find out the final three identities for the Week 1 Finals field. And we're going to do it in the company of the asset Paul Nielsen. But before we talk about tonight, let's look back at this afternoon's session in Group C. And first of all, Reese Colley, how impressive was he? Very good. But you do get the feeling with Reese that there's definitely another gear to find. That's encouraging for him because he may need it if he wants to win this week. But winning 18 points out of 20, that is a fabulous, fabulous effort. And after winning the British Open very recently, I think he's brought that confidence to Portsmouth. But as far as Mark Graham is concerned, I didn't give him that much hope of getting in the top two. And I think he's found another level since I saw him at Lakeside earlier this year. So well done to him. They're through to the finals. Because this isn't an easy format for a debutant to perform in, is it? Because it's a different format to what they'll play in regular competition play. Yeah, it's endurance play, isn't it? Because <clears throat> when you're talking about uh, playing in tournaments, you might have to play one game and then maybe have a couple of hours break and then play another game. With this, it's quite relentless. So... Sometimes you play a game, have a game off, play another game. And it's managing the ups and downs of adrenaline as well. When you're winning, it's all good. But when you're winning, having a loss in there, it's about managing how you're feeling. Mark Graham did a very good job. And of course, Group B is our focus this evening. Let's have a look then at how things lie at the halfway stage of the action in this particular group. And you look at the three at the top of the table. How difficult is it going to be for them to be dislodged this evening? Not that difficult, but if you look at Burgoyne and North at the bottom two, they're only two points adrift, but the early fixtures are going to be so important. Someone like James Hurrell, who walked away with only four points to last night, he probably thought he left at least two points out there. He could do himself a lot of favours by winning his first couple of matches tonight to get to eight, which I think is going to be safe. But there's definitely pressure on Jim McEwen because he's very fortunate to be on six points. He didn't even play that well last night, but the man who was the best... He got himself on six points, should have been eight, but Burgoyne and North are not out of it. Absolutely not, which makes tonight so enthralling indeed. We can have a look at some of the statistics from yesterday's action, and in particular, the numbers that Scott Walters put in were absolutely exemplary. Yeah, they were. You look at how many Tom Plus checkouts we had last night, there were 10 of them. That's not bad at all. That's actually a very good effort. But when you look at the breakdown... Two players got one, he got eight. That makes a very different story, doesn't it? But even when you look at uh, Jim McEwen averaging 83 for the night, it's a bit suspect. He, he definitely got the rub of the green last night, but uh, Scott Walters was definitely the best player by quite some distance. So good that he actually has a highlight reel just to himself of the ton plus finishes that he put in yesterday. I'm not expecting you to do a running commentary over every single one of them, but we saw last time he was here, he won every single game on the Thursday, then subsequently lost every single game on the Friday, didn't qualify for finals night. Now, is that going to be itching at the back of his mind? He's aware of it. We've made him aware of it. And in a funny sort of way, it might have helped him that he lost the game yesterday, so he hasn't got that perfect record, and he's trying to do the same again. But it's a very different group dynamic. When you play in Group C and you've got five wins and you're going into the next day to try and get maybe just the one win to get through, which was proven today by Mark Graham that 12 points was enough. But, yeah, I just get the feeling he's, he's a bit more experienced and he had a bit of vigour about him last night. There was an air of, I'm going to get my own back on this tournament for denying me the last time. I don't think he'll be denied tonight. Interestingly, he said in his pre-match interview yesterday that he's looking to become a professional darts player in outright. 
do you think this tournament's actually given him that extra little bit of gumption to say, do you know what, I fancy this as a full-time occupation? I think so. When someone is playing four games and averaging around 93, which is what he did yesterday, if you can do that over the course of a season, you will definitely have a tour card, in my opinion, over the course of a two-year period. But it's being able to replicate that all the time. You are going to have to throw in the odd 105 average, which you got yesterday, but maintaining an average of 93 is a world-class level. It's about finding it and then replicating it. Well, let's have a look then at tonight's first game of the session. It features James Howell up against Richard North. It's a repeat of the final game of last night's session. And you get the sense that for Richard and Pete, the first games are crucial. They are. I think if Richard loses this game, he's definitely got to win his last three to stand any chance. But I think Richard can count himself very fortunate that he's coming into this repeat game from game 10 yesterday from getting the two points because he really shouldn't have got them. Indeed, that is the case. Now, Chris asked you earlier about the table predicament. I'm going to ask you early, so at least if you get it right, we can give you the praise at the end. Sure. Go on, here's your three. Can't go against Walters. I think hurrell has got way, way too much experience to, to let this one slip. And... I am not going to go against McHugh, and I just get the feeling he's, gonna, he's destined to make Saturday night. Like I did with Group C, I'm going to go with the top two. I don't think it's going to change. Ready for Friday night of the darts? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Let's get it on. Let's get it on indeed. Your Friday night darting party continues here at the Super Series. Marco Meyer is your referee on the stage. This man's going to race his way down to the commentary box to join Matthew Egger. Evening, Matt. Evening, Henry. Thank you for that. First game of the night, like I say, it's the last game of yesterday. Richard North and James Hurrell. We didn't quite see the best of Richard North yesterday. No ton plus finishes, an 82 average and three 180s, but I can guarantee you he is better than that. And he has came here today in a very buoyant mood. Richard North, twice played in the World Championship, Players Championship, UK Open, World Match Play, World Grand Prix, European Championship Finals. He has a very good list of majors that he's played in and majors that he's performed quite well in. These happened around about... First like is James to throw first. 2017, Game 2018 time. That's when Richard North was really at his peak. But if we're looking at the modern day, we've got to say James Hurrell is probably at his peak at the moment. Currently sat number one on the WDF rankings. 140. And the current England captain. Disappointed with his performance yesterday in this game. Felt he let it slip. One and an 74. An lot of doubles. But Richard North already starting to show that form. That gave that roll of honour that I've just laid out for you. 100. Interesting that yesterday, North, he was using a Nathan Aspinall dart. And today, he's gone to his own brand. 41. He's changed everything. Well, it looks like everything anyway. It might be the same stem, but the flight is different. The barrel's different. One I think the M point 40. is different. Obviously, yesterday was a bit experimental. And already this looks better. 100. Do you believe James, you require 121. The and the black and the rings there, they are darts that were actually made for him purposefully. I think, the, I think the orange bit was because he's ginger. Good start here from Hurrell. How important is it for Hurrell to get points James on the board and just 32. to create that distance between himself in third and the bottom two? It's important if he feels panic. Panic sets in from the missed doubles yesterday and feels he missed the opportunity. No it's score. Vital. Richard, you require the 90. He could lose this game and still be two points clear of Richard North. So it's not do or die. It's not the end of the world for James Hurrell. I don't like this route. Bullseye. Yeah, well, that's James Shaw than the first leg. Richard oh, North. Oh, that is brash. You've got to be a superbly confident person to Second go that Second leg is Richard to throw first. And there's one thing Richard's game never one. been short of, it's confidence. Oh, 
16. Let's go through Richard's stats from yesterday. One win from four matches. The one win came against Horrell. Running average of 82.44. Three maximums and a checkered percentage of 31%. 41. In every metric, James Horrell was better or the same. And by the same, I mean he had the same amount of maximums, but he had 57. a better checkered percentage, a better running average, better individual performance. He had a ton plus out, whereas Richard didn't. In fact, Richard's best finish of the entire week so far was that 90 that we saw in leg one. And despite all of that, this was the game that Richard North managed to get the points from. I'm not going to sit here and lie to our viewing public saying 43. that that was a great game and well done, Richard. Well, well done, Richard, but it wasn't a great game. It was a game that Hurrell let slip. It was almost a game that James lost as opposed to Richard 95. winning it, if that makes sense. A very fair assessment. James was quite distraught last night, leaving here. Very disappointed. 40. Well, he sets himself very high standards, and why wouldn't he? He is the England captain. There is a responsibility 60. that comes with that. And when you're the WDF number one as well, you're expected to play well all the time. You're the flag bearer for the system. But what I do like to 83. see this evening is that Horrell has definitely got the memo. He's wearing his black and yellow, my favorite color combination because it's my football team's colors. But he is very much 60. in keeping with the color scheme on the stage. In fact, it was the man who is more synonymous with yellow in the sport than anybody else, Dave Chisnell, who beat Richard North in his sole Players' Championship final on tour 40. a few years back. Mentioned yesterday, he's sort of the Apollo Creed of darts. In fact, he's got so many nicknames. 100. He's gone with a Lionheart shirt today. Yes, he has. He almost looks like a Detroit lion. Same colour. Same sort of animal silhouette. 99. James, you require 104. This could be good. Double 16. 88. What a Richard chance for Northie to get 79. a 2-0 lead here. This is a slow start from Horrell. Fifty-nine, James. You require sixteen. You're not going to get many chances like that when you've already thrown twenty-three darts in a leg. No oh score. Boy. Richard, if you he require was displeased 20. when he left here last night, I might want to give him some space right now to breathe because he might go two 0 down. Kind of been the story of his week. Yeah, that's game shot. Kind of the, the second story is why he hasn't Richard got this wrapped up already. Or why he might not have won Group A. Missing big numbers around Monday, Third Tuesday, like and Wednesday. James to throw first. Set up shots. Game on. And once again, punished. I had a little walk through the practice room on the way down to the commentary box after speaking with Henry. Boy, was it quiet in there. 58. That's the first time tonight that a room's been quiet. Yes. Why is that? Because this man, Mr. Garrulus, 100. He was pumping a few tunes out, apparently, and chatting everybody into a state of ecstasy. 100. Like said, Jim McHugh and Pete Burgoyne and Scott Walters were happy for a bit of peace and quiet while he's on the stage. 140. I think Scott Walters, Pete Burgoyne. And Jim McEwen will also be quite happy with the scoreline on the stage at the moment because this opens things up. 119. If it does carry on in this vein, it will make for a very interesting evening. But that's the dart that's been plaguing Northy the last 24 hours. 
First start short. 85. And he's having to throw them harder than he would naturally do to try and compensate for it coming up short. 100. James Hurrell, to me at the moment, looks like a man who's got a little bit of fatigue. 60. James, you require 124. Three day sessions, one night session in the bank. Bullseye. 99. Chance for Northian 3 0. I didn't think I was going to be saying that in this game. Double top. 96. There is that dart. James, you require Coming up 25. Short. Whether it's a late release or a tight arm, we just don't know. But it can't continue. Double eight. Yeah, it has game shot. There we go. Hurrell has finally James got his Hurrell. first leg of the night. And did you notice something about the back of that shirt? From Northy as well. Forward lag, it's Richard to throw it's first. Two nicknames on it. Game on. It's got Northy and Lionheart on it. It says Northy Lionheart. 100. We'll get a view of that in a second. Oh, yeah. Make your mind up, Richard. And I believe that shirt hasn't always been that way. That might be an edit. One of them I think it might be, actually. He did, a, he did have a conversation with me a few years ago. He said, what do you think my nickname should be? And I said, it's got to be something to, to do with your name if you haven't got some sort 45. of quirky story. And I said to him, your name's Richard, and nobody's called the Lionheart because Richard the Lionheart was a monarch, of course, around 800 years ago. One on the M40. And Richard the Lionheart is quintessentially English, which exactly Richard is. And he embraced it, but... One on the M20. Whereas he is wearing the shirt, it, it seems like he'd rather be called Northy than anything else. So in the end, he hasn't embraced it. 100. This is better from James. Got his first leg on the board. 134, 140, 100. 79. James, you require 12. 127. And considering what he's thrown in this match so far, that will be a vast improvement. 102. Richard, you require you know, 154. Some laid up there. But James is not the kind of person to take risks. 60. James, you require 25. Should go back to double eight. It's been good in like three. He only just gets a shot at it. Yeah, that's game shot in the fourth line. He's starting to get James the hang Hall. of this, isn't he? Maybe after giving Richard a bit of encouragement in the start, he's going to steal it away Fifth from... Fifth is James to throw first. The man who game. resides in Hampshire. Just looking at the averages for this game and the averages for yesterday, they're pretty much on par. Not much between 100. them. It's like they've gone to bed, got up today, done whatever they've done today, got here and said, let's just carry on what we was doing. One on the end, oh, 20. Out, barrel out. That was a very eventful visit there for Richard. We were talking yesterday about Gloucestershire, which is the county 96. of James Hall. Not having a great deal of darting talent to shout about over the years. He is without a doubt the best they've ever produced. Well, Henry Deegan, our host, 100. sent me a message yesterday talking about Gloucester holding a cheese rolling championship at Cooper's Hill every June. They roll a lump of Gloucestershire cheese down a hill and the winner is the person who claims it at the bottom. Is that the thing where everybody falls down the hill? 95. Yeah, it's supposed to be really dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's where you get a lot of broken bones. Amazing what you do for a bit of cheese. 100. I don't see many vegans on that hill. 100. First to a finish again. 
And after being 2-0 up, Richard is staring a possibility of 3-2 down in the face. 46, James, you require 110. He's not going to leave double eight in this combination. He's gone bull on 90. What do you think of that? 70. Do you think the trouble is he's the better player? 135. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. By the time you get stuck on it, that's a good lie for Richard. If you could have got that treble 70. 20, fancy that bull. James, you require 40. He got the bull on the 90 check out in leg one. But it turned things around. Yeah, it has came short in the fifth line. His doubles line. have James improved Hull. immeasurably. If you think about what Hurrell is doing. Six slag, it's Richard to throw first. Game on. He's actually three hits from 11 now. But earlier on, he could barely hit a shot. 85. The last three legs, he's been really, really good. Fifty four. So uh, looking for a bit of redemption here, James Hurrell. Said he was extremely disappointed last night to lose to Richard North. Forty one. The manner in which he did that. All those missed doubles. Loads of match starts. We lost count. One on the end, forty. He's well on his way to putting that right. He's averaging 86.45 right now 100. with 27% on the doubles. But like I say, it's not about the first couple of legs. It's about what he's done since then. It's been very, very handy. 59. It has its own intricacies, best of seven. And you probably remember the county days when it was best of five for the men and the women. But nowadays... It's best of seven, isn't it? Because one on the when those five. changes were made, it's made a slightly longer format out of the WDF and XBDO players. One on the round it 40, is a little bit different. which it has you require a little bit more forgiveness than best of five. And James is doing a very good job of negotiating a best of seven format match here. After 85. a poor start. James, you require 100. We're going to do one more thing. Or should I say three more things? A treble, a single, and a double. Barely missed a double in the last three legs. Game that is shot. exemplary match, from Horrell. James That's Horrell. what an England captain does. He had a poor start, but after that, he was superb. Averaging 87.86. The only ton plus checkout of the match was the last shot. And his checkered percentage in the end was very respectable at 33%, denying Richard North shots at doubles in the last few legs. That's why he now goes to six points with McEwen and Walters. And when we come back, it will be McEwen and Walters going toe to toe in match two.
Welcome back to the Motors Super Series where James Hull has completed a comeback victory against Richard North to win by four legs to two. North opened up a 2-0 lead in that one before Hull reeled off four legs of his own. These are the match statistics then from that one. Hull of an 87.86 average. No maximums in our first game of the evening. Four out of 12 on the doubles was enough for Hull to get over the line. Helped by that 108 checkout. As for Richard North, now you get the sense he's going to have to win every single game from here on in if he's going to stand a chance of qualification out of Group B later on on the scene. So James Hull putting himself in a very strong position in the context of Group B. But it is the top two in the group that go toe-to-toe -to -toe in our second game of the evening as Jim McEwen takes on Scott Walters. McEwen yesterday winning this fixture in the deciding leg by four legs to three. It's another day in the darting marathon for McEwen, played in the Pro Tour last week at the Super Series. This week, we'll be hoping there's still one more day left to go for him in the darting roller coaster that has been the last couple of weeks. As for Walters, he was absolutely excellent last night. Fantastic finishing. We saw in that VT earlier on this evening. Can he keep up some of that form this evening? If he does, he'll put himself in a very good position to progress his way into tomorrow night's finals. It's going to be the first statement of intent from one of these two to get their place into tomorrow night's final. Let's hand over to our commentary team for it. It is Paul Nicholson and first Matthew Edgar. Scott Walters was mightily impressive yesterday. Literally every single stat that we look at, Scott Walters is top of. And that's why he's top of the board. He averaged at 105 yesterday, which could have been a lot more. Nicknamed The Game. That's why he's got Triple H's walk-on song. Big fan of that, like that one. But Jim McEwen, like Henry said, it's a darting marathon. Four days of pro tour action up in Barnsley before making the long drive down to Portsmouth where he's now on day five of action. Is there now a risk? And especially with the level of performance we've had from Jim, when you're winning, it's easy. When you're winning, it's fun. It's not tiring. First leg like is Jim the throw first, game on. Is there now a risk that because Jim's not done his best, that now he's going to start feeling the hours? Yeah, maybe, but I think he's wily enough to try and find other ways of creating energy and Nineteen. I'm a big fan of the fact he's been for a haircut today. Because sometimes you need something like that just to make you feel good. We had the same conversation, didn't we, about going after 13. the shave. Just little things that change how you feel. Putting on a new pair of shoes, putting on a new pair of trousers. Only that because we didn't have a shave in the end, did we? Ninety-eight. Well, you're right about Scott Walters, though. Averaging 93.63 for the night. Best performance of over 105, like 16. Matt said. 10 maximums. Next best, Burgoyne with five. He was so far ahead of everybody else. And the fact that he shared the most amount of points with McEwen... 32. ...is about as befuddling as I've seen in any Group B scenario in the last couple of years. It was just weird. The fact that McEwen averaged 10 less, got 8 less maximums, 7 less ton plus checkouts, and 10% less on his checkouts overall. But they've got the same points on 6. 58. Sometimes the stats can really tell lies. However, it is the points column that we'll be using at the end of the night to see who goes through to Saturday. Robert Owen, Reese Colley and Mark Graham already through and waiting. Yeah, two Welsh players, one English. 85. Probably more English and Scottish from this group. 137, Jim, you Scott. require 129. Considering some of his games yesterday, this is a bit of a slow start, actually. But Jimmy Mack, as we called him yesterday, is not going to take a 129. 
but will he be coming back? 47. Scott, you require 74. I've got that song on my head now. It's not the worst song to have in your head. Double top. 54. Jim, you require to 82. flick it over the top and skid it in. Just missed the target. It's almost like he was doing a bit of big box, little box on the way to their board there. 74. Turns into 20. Jimmy is coming back. Yeah, that's good. And winning leg one line. in 21 Jim darts. McEwen. How many lives is he using up in this group? Second leg, it's got to throw first. Game on. I think the, the word Wiley is very apt, actually. 60. Let's talk about Walters and those Tum Plus checkouts because we did see at the top of the show some of the shots that he hit. A lot of them were on double top. One in particular that had two double tops in it. 100. What, eight Tum Plus checkouts? I can't remember the last time I saw that in an evening. And it got to the point. One hundred and eighty. Well, when he went three 0 up on Richard North, and took out, I think it was one hundred and twenty four on the bolt. The reaction from North told the story. It was as if Richard had no answer. If he'd have had four darts, he still wouldn't have beat Scott Walters. Yeah, three 0 down. He decided to bow down to him, didn't he? Give him a a bow at the back of the stage. I think you got the wrong wrestling song. It's the game, not bow down to the king. Same wrestler, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Triple H, yeah. <laughs> 135. Scott, you require 164. And this will be the biggest one of this group. And Jim's got the biggest one of the week. He got a 170. On Tuesday. 28. Jim, you require 170. 170. For another one. Seems to have fixed that line that he had a problem with the last couple of days. Scott, you Everything require seems to be going quite direct so far tonight, which is a good sign for Jim. Fifty-eight. Jim, you require sixty-five. Doesn't have to go twenty-five. He might. I was going to say sometimes go for the treble eleven, but that is a twenty-five for two darts at tops to double his lead on that bed. It's tens again. Fifty-five. Scott, you require seventy-eight. That one. I uh, just imagine. A load of dart players lining up outside the hairdressers tomorrow. Yeah, that's what game shot. What a great job line. from Walters. Scott Walters. Bad first start, sensible second, pinpoint third, and we got an even third game. Third is Jim the throw first. Game on. I'm a big believer in it, you know. I think if you've got a big challenge coming up and you want to just create... A bit of freshness about yourself. Go and get a haircut. Go and get a massage or something. Just make yourself feel good. One on the you don't have to 40. just sleep. In order to be rested, you have to do things smart. So yes, sleep well, eat well, hydrate, One on the and 40. do the things that make you feel happy. Something like a haircut can do the world of good. I've said this about Adrian Lewis and Michael Smith for years. When they don't go and get a haircut, and they start looking a bit scruffy. They play scruffy. 100. With that in mind, I've got a bit of a question for you and our audience as we get our second maximum of the match from Scott Walters. I'd like to know from you and the audience who are your favourite five 100. PDC Tour pros to watch? Please get in touch with us at MSS Darts. But on top of that, I want to know who your top five players Jimmy are that don't have tour cards as well. Now, in the next leg, you will get my favourite five players to watch in the PDC. 
and you'll get my five favourite players who don't have a tour card. One of them you've probably never heard of. Fifty-five. Scott, you require one hundred and thirty-six. Ninety-six. Do yourself Jim, you a favour, Jim. Take us out. Because Walters is not going to miss that tops. One hundred and six. Cross to the eighteens. Seventy four. And gives the chance Scott away for the break. 40. I said he wouldn't miss. Yeah, that's Hate King to say, I told you so. Leg. Scott Walters. But that is a fourteen dart break and Walters takes the lead. Come on the map. I did give you this question. I'd like to know your favourite five PDC players to watch who currently have tour cards. I like people with a bit of pace. So One on the M40. Luke Humphreys. Good bit of pace. I think he's going to be a world champion one day. Michael Van Gerwen, because he's so good. And I had the privilege of spending quite a bit of time with Michael last week. And One on the round, 23. I'm not going to name names, but I've done exhibitions with people before who haven't wanted to sign autographs, who haven't wanted to do photos, who just want One to go, get paid, and go home. Michael is the total opposite. He had time for everybody. Even late at night when he's trying to get out the door, there wasn't one person he would turn away. And when you look at someone of the stature of Michael Van Gerwen, it'd be so easy... Him to have fell into that trap, and he didn't. So, big kudos to Van Gerwen. Ryan Searle, someone I shared a room with for many years. Very easy on the eye. One of the round, 23. Adrian Lewis. And my list is a bit biased, I'm putting my friends in. Um, but there's something I like about watching Danny Baggish. One hundred and eighty. Scott, you require and ninety-eight. You just don't care. Ah, nice list. I'll let you into my list in the next leg. Twenty-four. Oh, Jim, you require one hundred and thirty-eight. That's what we call a bag of nails. This is what we call a one-three-eight. Well, it could have been. 94. Scott, you require 74. He's taking a 78 out in this match on the bull. Double top. Is he going to try and skid it over the top again? Last time he tried it, it didn't work. 54. Just Jim, you maybe wasn't 44. close enough for the skidder and had to float it in. Motown. Or Jim McEwen. The break back. Yeah, that's and he breaks back in line. exactly the Jim same McEwen. amount of darts that Walters broke him in leg three. Fifth leg is Jim McEwen tonight. first. Game on. A bit like last night. So my five, it's very difficult for me to choose five because I've got really good relationships with certain players, but there are some people I like to watch more than others. And Humphreys. One on their own 40. He's probably someone I should have put on my list because I, I love Luke a bit. I feel like I shouldn't put him on the list, though, because I've, I've coached him and I've, I've just got a massive 100. soft spot for him. But I do, do love to watch him. However, my five are Johnny Clayton. Just love watching him. Peter Wright, been a friend of mine for a long time, and I love watching him play. Nathan Aspinall, I love his passion. Chris Dolby, completely selfishly because I broke with his dad. And I love to watch him play. And tonight, he beat Michael Van Gogh, so well done, Chris. And Damon Hetter, who is my favourite player. I'm a self-confessed Damon Hedda super fan. Put those together and that's quite a night of entertainment. Isn't it just? If this game keeps going, we'll talk about our non-tour card holder lists. 43. We just keep a hold of that for now and see how this one progresses. McEwen is staring another break of throw in the face. 
One on the name. Forty is averaging high again. Look at this. He said he was averaging ninety-three for last night. He's raised the bar a little bit here. Ninety-three. Scott you require eighty-one. He's got six dots for this as well. Ah, double ten. Yeah, that's game that short. Classy. The flag. Scott Walters. You know what I'm going to say next? Classy Freddy Blassy. 14, 14, 12. Six like it's got they are the last first. three legs. Game on. It's a world class game, no matter who you are. You got five names that you like? Non tour card holders that you like to watch? 16. Yeah, again, it's biased. But it's my list, so I'm going to be biased if I want to. Aaron Beanie. Love the guy. Don't know if I've got the vocabulary to describe him fully, but twenty seven guy. I like it when Steve Brown plays. Because for me, Steve Brown sacrificed his career for everybody else's. Yeah, good point. Sixty. Scott Williams. Well, that that's a somewhat grey area, isn't it? Because he's got a tour card now. <laughs> Not this year, he hasn't though, has he? Not ah, good point, good point. Till next year, so love watching him play. We are very, very 100. similar in terms of sense of humour. We've both got a love for pie, and yeah, we just I'm looking forward. He's going to make me one one day. So. Yeah, good show. I like Scott a lot. One on the M forty. Robert Rickwood. Ah, I met him for the first time this year, and he's one of the funniest blokes you'll ever meet. Who's not trying to be funny? I've not actually spent any time with Robert. I, I might have to oh, buy him a coffee or something. You just have to One do that. One of them, fine. <laughs> oh, right. That's uh, something then. I could tell you many stories about <laughs> Robert. Who's your last name? Prakash G. 100. Oh, he's a good lad. I'll quickly go through my list. Robert Thornton, one of my oldest friends. Wolfie Adams. Thibaut Tricol, Carol Sedlacek. Is that just because of this shirt? I just love Carol. Anybody who's got their own power. I'll say. Uh, 44. Scott, you require uh, 141. He's got my vote. And I guarantee you haven't heard of the last name, but he's, he's a great guy and he's got the best name in sport. He's an Austrian dart player by the name of Wilhelm Schwingenschlergel. 97. It's the best name ever. Scott will be hoping he hears his name in a couple of minutes, because if he is, before that, he's going to be 83. hearing game shots. Scott should require 44. He hopes. He wishes. He might get. Oh, 31 left. He could get to eight points with a win here and deny... McEwen the chance to do just that. Double eight. Twenty-eight. He will Jim, be. Jim, you require one hundred and twelve. That he only got one shot at double eight there. He'll be fuming. Jim McEwen takes this one twelve, compounding the misery. He will not get a dart at the double here. Fifty-two. So Scott, Scott you require to get this wrapped up. He won't be that far from qualification with this hit. Game. Well done, shot Scott. And a match. You're getting Scott very Walters. close. And maybe that is a big relief for him because the last time he was with us, he didn't win any games on his second day. But a 91.73 average is found, even if he missed five darts at double. Highest checkout in that one, only 81. He's done better yesterday, but he doesn't care. He's just won by four legs to two, and he is remaining at the top of the table. And he does have people chasing him. You wonder what Richard North and Pete Burgoyne can do when they come back after the break in match three.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Scott Walters has just secured a vital victory in his race to progress through to finals night tomorrow. Getting the better of Jim McEwen by four legs to two. And this is how he did it. With an average of 91.73, three maximums to his name and four out of nine on the doubles, including a high checkout of 81. McEwen, two out of five on the outer ring. Not a bad return himself, a high checkout of 81. But it was the scoring power of Walters, which was what won his way through in the end in that one. So he moves on to eight points in the group, which means one more victory this evening will secure his place into Saturday night's finals in front of a crowd here at the Modus Live Lounge. Game three is a pivotal one for both Richard North and Pete Burgoyne. You get the sense that both players will need a victory in this one in the context of their particular groups and the race to get into the top three come the end of play this evening. Let's get it on then. Let's have a look before we do that at yesterday's reverse fixture because for Pete it was the final match of his session and it was he who got the victory by four legs to two against Richard the Lionheart. Well, North will be hoping that his chances don't go south in this one. Let's hand over to our commentary to sit, commentary team. I'll get my teeth in at some point this evening to see how this one goes. It's Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Thanks, Henry. Yes, North will be hoping not to go south. I like that pun. That's a good one. Pete Burgoyne is looking to gobble up Northy and leave him somewhat tattered like the scratch marks on his shirt. It looks like he's been scythed by some sort of caged wolf. But the feast will be looking to gobble up the 32-year-old from Romsey. I wonder how hungry the feast is tonight because on two points, he's very much in the fight. But... Must win first this game like for me, Matt. Richard Edgar. Flow first. Game on. I think the same as with Richard North as well, isn't it? Richard North already had a game tonight, so. 43. He's now down to just three matches. If he loses this one, he is done. Pete Burgoyne, I think, could afford to lose this. 85. He will have three more games to go. This is the first time we've seen him tonight. But if he wants to make life easier for himself, 93. he needs to take this win. I would agree with that a lot. Because if he can get the four points ahead of playing One of 40. the people he's chasing, everything will be in his hands. But he must get that jump, 58. in my opinion, to get within two points of Hurrell, McEwen, and four points of Walters. It's a big ask for him to get through this group tonight, but 100. I sense he's going to have to win three from four. We spoke uh, a lot about the 90s this week. I'm going to steal a from the 90s. I think Pete Burgoyne needs to take a chill pill. Last night, every single moment, he lived every 44. dark, good or bad. And in a game, you're going to throw, what, 80, 90 darts? You can't 140. play with that much emotion. you require 132. How fast is that, is it, from Northy? Is that in fast forward? He is very, 82. very difficult to read Richard sometimes. 140. Yesterday he was playing quite deliberately. Tonight he's a lot faster. 60. Beats you require 50. Right. If he hits this, I'm going to make the noise. 34. Richard, you require 80. Oh, really? Yeah, that's it's so short the first lag. I don't North. agree with it. I think it's silly, but when it looks like that, it makes him look like a genius. Second lag, it's beat it through it's first. It's just what he does. Game on. We should have asked the production if we could have got a button on our deck. 30. So every time Burgoyne won the leg, we could have had the, the graphic of the spring, and you could have done the noise. <laughs> So what would the noise be if Northy wins a leg? One on the round, 39. I think he makes enough noise for himself, don't he? Yeah, good point. Let's talk about that tops, tops then, Matt, because... 40. I've already said that I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think there's too much risk with it. If you go north, no pun intended, of that 81. double top, 
you still have to get two double tops with two darts left. I just think making reasonably sensible plays is the way to go. 41. Does that, does that make me old school? It's a very aggressive shot, but put a bit more context to that. One hole. Unnecessarily aggressive. It just goes to show the confidence levels that North has. He's got his first maximum 39 of the night right there. 101. But he really is playing quick. His last game of the night is 69. in game eight. Maybe he's got a bus to catch. One hundred. Richard Judy Choir, thirty-two. From the nineties, he'd have got his bus fare home. Yeah, it has came short in the second leg. Richard, no. Fourteen daughter there from Richard. That's more like it. Two in the lead. All of a sudden, is he Third starting leg, to get the message Richard that he first. needs wins? Game on. In every game, if he's going to stand a chance of getting through, because the best he 81. can do is eight points now. Walters is already there. He's got three games left. McEwen is on six. And so is Horrell. 100. Eighty-four. Can you establish for me why he's playing this quick? Is he trying to unlock something? I think there's a hint of frustration. One hundred. A hint of just do it. One hundred. He's doing it very quick. To be on stage for four minutes, thirty-three seconds, and he's closing in on a three lead. He's not going to break Graham Usher's record of the quickest game. I believe that's still the case. I'll double check that. For 85. You, 85. I think Burgoyne is offering not much in terms of resistance. 57. Richard Jerry Graham, 151. 61. You want some records? We're about to kill you the records for the speediest game. Richard Judy Choir, 90. I can tell you Pete Burgoyne at two jacket potatoes in four bites. <laughs> That's some record. 80. Pete Judy Choir, 104. There. In about five and a half minutes. 80. Can this be found? There's your answer. 96. Richard, you require 10. 80. No score. Beat you require That's the problem when eight. you change your pace. You lose your rhythm. And you start throwing darts like that. You can see from his look on his face how he felt about that one. Double one. Six. Richard, you require going his 10. Way so far this week. Yeah, that's game short than the third leg. Richard Norm. Well, he didn't expect to have a 3 0 lead on double one, but that's what he's got. Ford Lark, it's Peter's throw first. Game on. 41. What I can tell you, just for giggles and giggles, is that the shortest match in the number of darts was Chaz Barstow. 28. This year against Mike Gillett, and it was completed by both players in 99 darts. It's the only game we've ever had that's been 18. completed from both players in less than 100 darts. I think that's quite remarkable. Shortest match ever is 42. Graham Osher. In fact, he's got the top two. Five minutes, 48, beating Gavin Carlin this year in phase four. And beating Andy Jenkins in two seconds more in five 43. minutes, 50 seconds. I'm quite astounded that Scott Baker hasn't got that record. In fact, he's got the fourth quickest. Six minutes and one second over Chris Quantock earlier this season. 
One on the name 40. This is catastrophic for the chances of Burgoyne. 57. He would remain on two points, but his leg difference would plummet if he loses this leg. 81. 48. I almost don't want to put the averages up. 116. Because these guys are better than that. They've really suffered with missed darts at double, but the scoring phase, it has been lacking something. How about a bit of this? 80. 80. What's he going to leave? 50? 123. Nope. Beats you require 36. Does he get the noise? No score. Nothing Richard, you going right. 107. Nine missed darts at double. And North could finish the job on double top. 67. I hit two double tops. Three darts and nine. He can't find one with one. He's struggling. 27. Struggling Richard big style. That's now 14. 12 darts missed at a double in this match. North should win. Game. North does Shots win by four legs to nil. Richard North. Incredible when you think about it. But North, he is still in the fight. He still needs to win his last two matches. And he may have to hope for results to go his way. But Pete Burgoyne losing that one by four legs to nil. He stays on two points and goes to the foot of the table now. With a leg difference of minus nine. He will not like that performance. Still got three games to go. Still got a chance, but he must play better than that. Next game is Scott Walters up against James Hurrell. This one promises much. Let's see what that one gives when we come back.
This is the Motor Super Series. One hundred and eighty. The Tungsten Revolution will be televised here at the Modus Super Series. And if you thought Series 1 was good, there is plenty more to come with us here at the Modus Super Series. And you can join us every Saturday night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Tickets are available. They're complimentary as well. Head over to dartshop.tv for more information on that. But to the here and now, because a big victory for Richard North in his quest to qualify for finals night tomorrow evening. A 4-0 success against Pete Burgoyne. Not just a victory, but a big one is that of that as well to help with his legs difference. These are the stats then from this one. Four out of 12 on the doubles for North. A game that Pete Burgoyne will want to put to the back of his mind and try and improve upon as the evening goes on. So following the conclusion of three games, let's have a quick check at how the table lies in Group B because things really are beginning to get interesting now. Scott Walters on eight points can actually qualify if he beats James Hull in our next match. Hull and McEwen poised on six points, but now Richard North just two points behind them in the Group B table. Things are beginning to get very, very interesting indeed. Well, we have two of the top three playing in our next action. In fact, the top two in this table playing in our next fixture. The winner of this will go top of the Group B table. Scott Walters can sign, seal, deliver his name into the finals tomorrow night with victory in this one. Can he do it against the Hillbilly? We're going to find out in the company of Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Thanks, Henry. Interesting game ahead, and it could well be signed, sealed, and delivered. Like Henry said, for Scott Walters, it will be a little bit of relief for him coming into match two of the night for him that he has got points on the board already. And he can play with a little bit of freedom because how close is he right now to being in Saturday night for the first time here in Portsmouth? Very close, but not close enough. Get the 10 points. I've always said, 10 points in Group B, you're fine. I think the way this group's gone, and the way the other results have been going so far, I think the winner takes it all. I think the winner goes through. Did you just quote ABBA? Somewhat unintentionally. I was trying to think of another ABBA song to come back with, but... My knowledge first is lag, it's Scott so first. Waterloo, Ville is just down the road. You probably don't get that. Geography isn't your strong suit. We've already established that this week. 81. Well, Winchester is the hometown of Scott Walters. Only about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more from here. So it is a bit of a home game. And 85. He's already said in his pre group interview yesterday that if he does make Saturday, he will bring some people here. 57. Which always helps a Saturday night. Conan Whitehead brought plenty of people here last week and the atmosphere was ridiculous. 96. In a good way. He's gone through a lot over the last few years. As Scott... 60. When he made a Saturday night in Southampton, not that long ago, he had a bit of a an innocuous thing happen with his foot. 140. He ended up going to hospital because of it, and he nearly lost his life. There's a really strange set of circumstances, and 57. I think if we were to grab an interview with him at some point, it would be interesting for our audience to hear that story. But to turn things around and get himself a win here 65. in week one would be very, very welcomed for him. And the amount of money for a weekly win would make a difference to him and give him a bit of impetus going into the end of 2022. 
he was very, very close to making Lakeside, wasn't he? 90. Lost out James to Johnny Haynes 15. in the qualifiers in the last leg decider. Been a very, very eventful year. Fifty nine. Scott should require one hundred and fifty six. These have been his trademark these last couple of days. The ton plus outs. One three years is the biggest one he hit. James should require fifty six. James's, I think, was 130, wasn't it, yesterday? 36. Scott, well, you require 56. Way too often at the start of his first match, but he was able to fix it. Double top. Walters. 46. James, you require 20. It's to do the same. Yeah, that's game shot in the first leg. James Hurrell. Yeah, very tidy when he comes back. And that is a break of throw. So, Hillbilly Hurrell. He's going to make Saturday night. James to throw first. Get his walk on game song on. out there. He'll be very popular. I wonder if he's going to bring anybody along. It's a bit of a trek from Gloucestershire to Hampshire, isn't it? Sorry, I keep forgetting about your geography prowess, Matt. I do apologise. One hundred and eight. If you are interested in coming here, and we have got some tickets left, go to dartshop.tv. We'd love to see you down here tomorrow night. One Starts at 10 p.m. And you might get legs like this. There's something going on with Horrell, isn't there? 58. With black and yellow. Is that his colour scheme? I wouldn't have said that about him but he's got black and yellow shirt on black and yellow stems and flight combination one on the down oh. 40. you tease we've only had one nine daughter on this stage so far since we came here and that came from connor heenahan on a night 81 where he established the venue record average as well not in the same game Eighty-one. Do you think the venue record's going to be beaten in this stage, Matt? Is someone going to beat one hundred and fifteen point six two? You'd think so, wouldn't you? After thirteen more weeks of play, obviously twelve weeks of getting you one on the own forty. Scott should require one hundred. The finals, Champions Week. So thirteen weeks in total. This being week one. Oh, he did this last night. Yeah, and he's done it again. In the second leg. Scott Walters. He really does like double top. And that's the second time tonight we've seen tops tops. Third leg, it's first Scott from North. first. Game second on. from Walters. And if he's going to find that kind of mood again, Hurrell's got issues. Tops tops are in that situation. Much more fan of. Absolutely. 59. <laughs> I always love as well looking at players' tattoos and what they get. Scott's tattoo on his right forearm just says England. 60. So if somebody ever found him, the first thing they'd realise, well, he's English. There it is. 100. <coughs> you got any tattoos, Matt? No. No. Not a fan of the old needles. 97. Oh, no, that's right. We had a conversation about that yesterday. Well, you might be one of the few dart players that don't doesn't have any ink. Fair bit on the left arm as well, therefore. 100. Walters. Looks like a bit of a tribal pattern. Who's got the best tattoos in darts? Because... That's some very impressive one stuff. I know George Collins got a lot of body work. Yeah, he was the first one that came to mind. Um, Aaron Beanie, his actually a story. I can't tell you what it is. 55. But his have a lot of meaning behind them. Alex Simon Whitlock's. He's got a roulette wheel on his arm. It's got the darts numbers on it. It's really clever. 
Andy Hamilton's 16. got some good stuff as well. Sixty. James Hilton with one hundred and forty-four. YouTube. Dark players and their tattoos. What are they and what do they mean? I'm giving you free ideas here, Matt. I know uh, Neil Duff had tattoos on him after he won the Lakeside title. Didn't Sixty. He? Oh, did Scott he? Scott one hundred and twenty-seven. I believe if you go on his Twitter, he's got a picture of it on there. Oh, interesting. One hundred and twenty-seven and. 102. Not game. James, you require 84. So far, Hurl's withstood the barrage from Walters. It could well be 3 0 Walters right now. Fifty nine. Scott should still require be two, twenty-five. There have been plenty of chances missed in this game so far. Double eight. Yeah, that's game shot Very and the clean. bird leg. Scott Walters. And Walters average three legs in. is a good three points less than his Ford opponent. Four leg is James to throw first. Game on. I wouldn't be surprised if Hurl's got a bit of a headache from this week because the amount of games he has been put through the mill and the amount of legs he's left out there. Quite extraordinary. One hundred and eighty. Third one eighty of the game. Two for Horrell. One for Walters. One hundred and forty. It definitely has the ingredients of being game of the night. And I always say that you need brilliance and misses for drama. One hundred and forty. Let's look out at that arena there. Very quiet right now. It won't be like that tomorrow. This time, it'll be boisterous. Look who's back in the leg. 180. Do we know what Henry's top three predictions was earlier? He put you on the spot, didn't he? Do we know what he's got? No, he, he put me on the spot, but I, I didn't return the favour, so should we do it? Yeah, because he would have... Uh... Linked up earlier, wouldn't he, with Sporty Stuff TV? To but it's, 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 not, it's not fair, though, because he's got more information than I had. We're already three and a half games deep in the night, so his predictions are probably all going to come true because of what <laughs> has happened over the last three games. But 55. We'll have to James get his input 136. To He said to Sporty Stuff TV earlier, you're absolutely right, well done. So, Henry, we want to know who you went for. So, you're not off the hook. Sixty. Scott should require one hundred and twenty-six. Isn't this one of the checkouts he took yesterday? I think it was the very first one. Don't do it this time. James Hurl was squinting. Fifty-eight. James should require seventy-six. Apparently, Henry went for Scott Walters to win the group of two to one. That's all we're getting. We're not getting any more information. Apparently, nobody else is going to qualify. Not done anything the easy way this week. Is he doing what Pete Burgoyne did yesterday? Is he expecting too much from every dart? Taking his time here because he's scuppered himself for a shot at double. Maybe he's saying 36. the funny side of it now, but he might not be in a second. Scott should require 68. Yeah, that's, that's game a big time in conversion line. in 17 Scott darts. Walters. And Walters gets the break. He's owning this group if he gets one more Fifth leg. Fifth it's got to throw first. Game He's on. that close to qualification for Saturday with two games to spare. And let's face facts, he has been the best player in this group by some distance. 100. If you think about his level of performance throughout the group, he's averaged around 93 for the whole time. He's not even at that level. 
One on an M14. And he's still looking very comfortable here. That first dart has been planted right now. One on an M14. He was interviewed, didn't he, on the opening yesterday that he wants to be a full-time player. I wonder if that means that Q School is going to be on the radar for... Has to be. 100. Do you think he'll make it? Or do you think maybe the challenge to our next year and a bit of work here to go through the 82. Scott Williams route of things, would that be a better route for him to get into the tour in maybe 2024? Some things can come too quickly to people. It's a question of whether he thinks he's ready. I was going to say exactly that. Some people get a bit too quick. And then they go 16. on the tour and you've got two years playing the world's best players in week in, week out. And it can become very demoralising very quick. If I was to give Scott some advice, 99. it would be, don't be disheartened if you don't get on tour next year. You can spend more time with us. You can go to the Challenge Tour. You can play some WDF stuff. You can gain some more confidence, earn some more money, and then get yourself 81. ready for Scott, an even bigger 18. challenge after that. Single 20. The tops to win the match. 40. James, you require 120. Well, North, he went two tops for 80. I know the Hurl's not going three tops. He's not going to get a shot at tops at all. Maybe that's the first time this week that James has shown 55. just how frustrated he is. 40. For a big time win and for qualifying. Game. Walters Shots has made it. And, match. and he's got Scott his redemption Walters. from stage one. He will make Saturday night. Congratulations, Scott. You've still got two more matches to go. So don't relax too much. He did have the better average. He had the better checkered percentage. And he did have that wonderful 100 out with two double tops as well. Well done to Scott Walters. Now it's just a question of whether he will win the group, of course. We've got Pete Burgoyne and Jim McEwen coming up in match five. And that will take us to the halfway point here tonight. So don't go too far. Match five is coming right up.
And so Scott Walters waltzes his way into tomorrow night's final here at the Moda Super Series. Literally as well, as he came off the stage, he's having a little bit of a boogie to himself in celebration of qualifying for tomorrow night's final. As he gets a better of James Hubble by four legs to one. These are the statistics then from that match. Averages around about the same, 89 and 88 respectively. Two maximums apiece as well. But as you can see, it was on the doubles which made the key difference. Walters four from nine, Howell one from four. That 20% difference being important in the end. And that is what secures Scott's place into tomorrow night's final. So let's have a look at the table quickly then following that match. Just to rubber stamp Scott Walters' place into the finale tomorrow evening here at the Live Lounge. Howell and McEwen both on six points respectively north and burgoyne well north and four burgoyne on two so they're the two men playing catch up in this group McEwen's in action next against pete burgoyne he can move his way on to eight points in the reverse fixture yesterday between the pair it was the scott that got the honors by four legs to two and it was courtesy of this double here the Double five up on the last dart there to secure the victory. Burgoyne couldn't even look. Well, Burgoyne could be eliminated if he loses this match to Chucky. Big, big game with big, big ramifications in this group. It's the halfway match of our evening here in Group B. And it's going to be enjoyed in the company of the former players champion, Paul Nicholson, and Matthew Edgar, the star of Edgar TV. Gents, what are you predicting in this one? Well done for putting us back on the spot, Henry. But I like the fact that he <laughs> he bigged us up before he put us on the spot. So you were buttering us up there, were you, Henry? Well, I hate to say buttering up. It might make people going hungry. Strikes me as the kind of guy who would like a bit of batter. Right. I'm going to go for a Jim McEwen win based on what we've seen so far tonight. Having said that, Neither have won a game yet, but after Pete lost 4-0 to Northy, you probably have to go with the freshly shorn Scotsman. I'm going to go Jim McEwen to win. Four legs first to leg, it's Peter throw first. Game on. It's be 2-1-80s in the game. And the highest finish can be 82. I swear if this comes in. I'm going to need your crystal ball. 43. New flights here for Pete Burgoyne. It's gone for the yellow versions. Whether they are the same shape, I don't know. We will soon find out. What is it with players experimenting 18. game to game? Peter Wright's got a lot to answer for, really, hasn't he? Well, they do look like 83. a very similar shape. But I'm not going to stick my neck out and say that they are exactly the same shape. But having said that, the other ones look ribbed. These ones are smooth. And you might say to me, what, does, what difference does 84. that make? Believe it or not, it does make quite a bit of difference. It would be somewhat... Well, not funny. Funny is the wrong 81. word. Comical is probably the right word. If he starts to go bananas with the yellow flights in after not getting much in the way of joy with the black flights. 90. So if the yellow flights are bananas, is the black flights of Chucky, are these lumps of coal? Avocados. One on the end, 25. That's the Christmas vibe again. How is the avocado Christmas like? My lump of coal on him. Oh, right. You're... Oh, yeah. And it simulates because he hasn't played his best. I guess I can see where you're coming from. 100. Are you one of those lads that used to get an apple and orange and a lump of coal in your Christmas sock? No. Um... 60. Jim, you require 147. When I was younger, we had rules of the age of the start of computers. What was the first one you got? An Amstrad. Green screen? And then a Commodore 64. Oh. 41. Beat you require 109. Right, an Amstrad. That was a good Christmas. 
That was a present for me and my siblings. Double 16 for Pete. 77. Still hasn't got Jim a leg tonight. Jim 106. Hopefully for him he gets another shout. All down to Jim who's looking for 66 and tops. Or 66. And another 40 another way. 43. Pete, you require 32. He really 32. is starting to lose that line again, isn't he? That has been his biggest failing this week. Dragging the dart left. Yeah, it has came short Bugoin. in the first leg. Finally Bugoin. gets his first leg of the night. And maybe he's got something to build on now. And whenever a human being Second leg is feels Jim like the they need help, first. they always look up. Came on. This is a pretty good place to look up. Former church. You never know, there might be something up there. Spiders. Something like that. There is a TV screen up there. And I wonder if while Jim was throwing it through the TV. Now, we played on stages before. Did you ever do that thing where when your opponent was throwing at a double, 18. instead of watching the board, you'd watch it through the big TV screen that the crowd get because it felt like a detachment? I used to try and ignore those big screens because they used to flash the averages up and things like that. I, I didn't want that information. There's one very infamous match in my career where I couldn't one ignore it. 31. I kept flashing up somebody's other half. And it was having an effect on the crowd, which in turn had an effect on the game. I didn't appreciate 16. it much. 16. I was always trying to compartmentalize, especially at Ali Pali, because the stage is so big. Try and make sure that it feels a lot smaller than it actually is. You only played Alexandra Palace when it was its current shape right one on the yeah, 40. you never played it when it was long ways it was much better that way it felt a lot bigger peter wright's one of those players that'll stand and watch the one on the 25 watching it just detaches don't it from the real life like some of my friends would say these guys haven't got proper jobs they're just flinging darts at a mat Twenty-seven. It's good work if you can get it, but it's not easy. It takes its toll on you. You've got to work hard at staying positive and doing the right things all the time. Eighty-one. Jim, you require one hundred and forty-five. Living every dart again, like you said yesterday, Matt. All he could do there was leave one fifty-five. Is it remiss of me to say that? McEwen is not playing well this week. Because we judge him by very, very high standards. 69. Beach, you require 155. Fancies it. 99. Jim, you require 76. Jim's confidence in getting through tonight because he's in it. A somewhat precarious position now with six points. He could really do with this double eight going in. 68. And it doesn't. Beach, you 56. Burgoyne could really drag himself into the race for the win in this match. If he was to win, he'd get to four points with Richard North. Sixteen. And the only two Jim points behind eight. Hurrell and McEwen with Walters in the safe house. No score. Oh boy. What else is gonna go wrong for Jim? Beach you require. He's lost 14. the line. There he's lost the weight of the dart. Yeah, that's game shot. And Burgoyne doubles line. the lead Be with Burgoyne. a break of throwing nineteen darts. If you're in Jim's shoes right now, what do you do? Take a Third deep breath. Rackets, Peter throws just first. Keep plucking away. Or in his case, keep chucking away. 60. This dart is so long. 60. That when he goes just above the treble 20, we can't even see the top of the flight. I wonder if it's longer than Daryl Gurney's dart. So you're going to say it's so long you're thinking about giving him a bow so he can fire it at the board? One on the end, 25. If you've got any longer, you could probably use it as a pole vault. 
I suppose it's all relative. Pizza big lad. One hundred. I can't imagine him throwing a tiny little dart like Stephen Bunting. These were thrown better. Fifty nine. But ultimately comes up troubleless again. This is what we're getting so far in this match. Not a great deal. One on the end, twenty. A ton scoring, but one more clicks over there for Pete. Only one one forty plus score so far in two and a half legs. Maybe that's about to change. One there you go. Hold right on cue. Eighty. We talked earlier in the night, and I'm bringing up lots of different things because I want the fans to get to know you, Matt. Eleven. And again, Jim I want to engage our audience. I want to know who your favourite referee is of all time. You can tell me in the next leg. I'll give you some time to think about it. I already know my answer. Who's that? And it's due to the 180 call. And? George Noble. Have you seen any pictures of George from when he was younger, in his early Got lakeside hair, days? Got hair. Got some great bow ties on. Looks very young. One on the end, 20. Ooh, that's a nice switch. Jim, you require 59. That could be a, a valuable approach if McEwen has more trouble on the doubles. Yeah, that's game show. No trouble here. Bag. Jim McEwen. That's McEwen. more like it. 14 dart at a break straight back. And that's exactly what McEwen. Ford like is Jim the throw first. For leg number three. Yeah, it's a difficult question for me to ask, actually, because uh, everybody's got their own reasoning for having a favourite referee. George has become quite a, a good friend of mine over the last few years. And I really value his friendship. 38. But my favourite referee growing up was always Bruce Spendley. Because he was the first professional referee I ever met. And whoever called a game for me. And I was so jittery. 100. When he did so. <laughs> I'll never forget that experience. But I would say that... As far as referees go... Because of all of the duties that they do... It's not just calling scores. It's about looking after player welfare... One on the end, crowd 40. management, that kind of stuff. They they don't get anywhere near the credit they deserve. But George is very good at managing crowds, managing 100. players, and calling scores as well. Got more experience than well most of them. Been doing it for thirty years. One hundred. Forty-four. They're an interesting looking thing, those flights. I don't think I've ever seen that model flight before. They look like the pop-on flights. What I mean by pop-on flights are... Ninety-seven. You don't feed them through a stem. You actually click them on top of a stem. And yet again, yellow is getting popular. Jim, you require 126. Well. When they played yesterday, it was 4-2 to McEwen, averaging 81 in game number six. 86. Looks like we might be going level after four. 59, Jim, you require 40. Double top. He got it with a 59 check in the previous leg. Yeah, that's game short. And, and the that's an even line. better shot. Jim Same McEwen. result, but more central. Pete Burgoyne's still got the darts here. But Chucky Fifth is bearing leg, down it's on Peter him. Peter throw first. Game on. Well, let's have a little look at social media because... We asked the question of some of our fans as to who 18. their favourite players are. We've had Liam Riley 
get in touch. Favourite non-tour card holders to watch, Martin Adams, Tony O'Shea, John Lowe, Phil Taylor and Richie Housen. One, that's quite the esteemed list for Richie Housen to be in, isn't it? Tour card holders, MVG, Adrian Lewis, Peter Wright, Glenn Durant, and Gary Anderson. 83. Interesting list. Our own Chris Murphy, who has made his way to Wigan for the Women's Series this weekend, has also got in touch as well. Favourite non-tour card holders to watch, Graham Usher, Robert Thornton, Lisa Ashton, Fallon Sheridan, and Bo Greaves. So he's gone for three ladies there. And as far as tour card holders are concerned, MVG, Price, Ro uh, Mervyn King, 98. Nathan Aspinall, and Josh Rock. You do want to get in touch and let us know your five favourite players to watch on tour 85. and off tour. By all means, get in touch at MSS Darts. And thanks for the guys who have got in touch with us this evening. One hundred. I suppose I should read out Jack Garwoods because he's the other person who's been in touch. Non-tour card holders: Richie Housen, who's getting a lot of love right now. Thornton, Nathan Gervin, Colin Osborne, Jared Cole. Fifty. And as for tour Beach players: Rick Gary Anderson, Anderson James Wood, Mervyn King, Dirk van Dijvenbode, and Kim Hybrechts. Nice suggestions there, Jack. Sixty. It's all subjective, though, isn't it? We've all got our favourites. Well, McEwen is not going to go to the 18s for the switch. And Bergen's going to get a look 60. at 80. Is he going to go the northy route? Or is he going to stay tradish? Tradish it is. If I say the word dish, he probably thinks he's going to get something to eat. 40, Jim, you require 128. Tray dish could be three plates. And we already know he has three breakfasts. That's where he got his nickname from. Oh, Chucky at the bull. 81, beat you require 40. Double 10 for Pete. Yeah, Finds that's the been lead. Sure than the fifth flag. He Bieber. wasn't sure it was in. <laughs> Marco Meyer was sure that it was in. I love the interactions between the players and the Six referee. Flag every is now and Jim again. The throw first. Don't take it at the board until the referee tells you it's good. Lee Seymour is obviously someone who watches the Super Series quite regular because he's picked quite a Super Series lineup for his non tour card holders. Go for it then. 100. Which has Barstow. Hmm. Michael Warburton, Bitten and O'Shea, Nathan Gervin. Yeah, I think Nathan Gervin's going to get a lot of love over the next few weeks. He's in the 26. World Youth Final against Josh Rock at the end of November in Minehead. Good luck to Nathan and good luck to Josh. Whoever wins that title will get a trophy that has been fingerprinted by the likes of 54. Bradley Brooks. Ted Everts, Luke Humphreys, twice by Dimitri Vandenberg, Corey Cadby, Aaron Monk, James Hubbard, Michael Smith. Great names on that trophy. 140. I think the runners up trophy is just as good, isn't it? Oof. Nathan Aspinall. Well, forget about winners like Max Hopp. Van Gerwen twice on the. Yeah, Van Gerwen twice a runner up to James Hubbard and Aaron Monk. Ricky Evans, runner-up. 77. Keegan Brown was a winner against Roby John Rodriguez. Adam Gallus. Yeah. Barry Van Pier. 45. When Adam Gavlas made that final, I think he'd been playing darts for about 18 months. 45. Who do you think is going to win that final? Rock or Gervin? 60. At the moment, I just feel like Josh Rock's going to win every darts game he ever steps into. <laughs> so you're saying that you think Josh Rock's going to win that final then? 
Look on the bright side. Whoever 16. doesn't win that final has got another crack next year. <laughs> it's not like Ted Everts and Luke Humphreys who were in the final and if they didn't win it, it would be too old to go back. Luke Humphreys could win the European Championship this weekend. 16. Started with an excellent ton plus start against Christopher Tyski yesterday. We got European Championship darts this weekend as well as the week 81. one finals Jim tomorrow Uruguay, starting from 10 p.m. in about 22 hours time. Pete's going to get his first chance to win a match tonight with the 149. It's a big ask and he's doing a bit of Zen tactics at the back there. 100. Hope he's not asleep. Pete, you require 149. Get your teeth into this, Pete. Sixty-three. Jim, you require fifty. He's a very animated character, isn't he? Might be taking the distance. We haven't gone the distance tonight. Yeah, that's good. Now we have on the six flag. Jim McEwen. And Pete's going to have the darts. And you do sense that if Burgoyne's got any hope. Seven ten final lag. It's Pete this to throw first. Leg must Demon. be won. Because if he stays on two points with two matches to go, all he can do is get the six points. McEwen and Hurrell 100. have got to play each other in the last match of the night. So this is win and possible lose and gone for Burgoyne. Do you concur, Matt? 100. Yeah, it's all or nothing now for Pete. And even then, the leg differences are not going to be good. You'll only be getting a plus one here. One on own forty. You will still have a little bit of an opportunity. Yeah, he stands at minus nine before this leg is done. That's the worst of all the players. That four 0 defeat to Richard North. Eighty five. That was the big one. Because Richard North has been playing at the same sort of level as Pete. And is the next arrival that Pete needs to ever take in the table. Eighty three. Average decibel in the practice room tomorrow will depend on whether Richard North qualifies, of course. One hundred. Oh, prayers to Pete Burgoyne here, who is in position to win this match. You can tell by the urgency on the face of Jim McEwen there that he really wants these two points. He does not want to have zero for the first half of action tonight. I've got bad news for him. It's not in his hands. Where's this been? One on the round 40. Beats you require 38. For his first win of the night and second win of the group. Game. He's Shot. done it. And the match. He's cost Peter Jim McEwen going. two points and he's kept himself in the race. He's now on four. And his leg difference has gone to minus eight. It's not ideal. But he's still in with a shout. Only two points behind James Hurrell and Jim McEwen. So McEwen and Hurrell are in a bit of bother. We'll take a short break after match five. And when we come back, we'll have a little look at what's happened tonight. And then we'll go into match six, which is Richard North against the already qualified Scott Walters.
Welcome back to the Super Series, where it was a big win for Pete Burgoyne as he got the better of Jim McEwen by four legs to three. The asset, Paul Nicholson, is alongside me to look back at the first five games of the evening. We begin with this one, Burgoyne, 4 out of 11 on the double, 78.74 average, enough to get him over the line against McEwen, who lost his opening game of the evening to Scott Walters. As I say, the asset alongside me to look back at the first five games of the evening session. Is it fair to say that the players are possibly thinking about what's ahead tomorrow night? Because there's been a few nervy darts here and there. Yeah, there have been some nervy ones. I think Jim McEwen is uh, definitely telling himself off right now because he's now been drawn into a battle. Richard North's only two points behind him. Pete Burgoyne the same. So what could have been a really comfortable night for the top three is turning into a bit of a battle, but not for Scott Walters because he's done very, very well this evening. With Jim McEwen, he's played a lot of darts recently. Was there going to be a point this week where it could potentially catch up with him? It had to, surely. You mentioned the word marathon. Let's face it, he's playing his ninth consecutive day. And I'm a big advocate for putting in the, the hours, but when you're 55 years of age, doing nine consecutive days has got to be really tough. As for Scott Walters, he knows he's through to tomorrow night's final. He takes part in our next match against Richard North. For Scott, after what happened last time, that's a bit of a relief to know that he's through. He's got the gold star now next to his name. Yeah, I think he will be a little bit relieved. And he's got his redemption now, and he does deserve it. He's played fabulous the last couple of days. But now it's about winning the group, probably by a margin, and giving himself the tag of Group B champion. Because what winning the group does do for you is give you advantages tomorrow in terms of what group you're in, advantages of throw in particular matches. So positions do mean prizes here. Yeah, they do. I think having that throw uh, in certain situations on Saturday night can give you the impetus to go and win the title. And obviously, that's now what Scott wants to do. But he has got two more opponents to dispose of. He's through, but he can have an effect on who else joins him. Now, these two are actually playing as doubles partners in Malta in a couple of weeks at the Malta Open competition. Two players from around this area, well acquainted with each other. And I feel rude that we're going to get the darts match on because it's going to stop the conversation they're having on the stage. I'd rather watch the darts than anything to stop Richard North from <laughs> talking. I can't imagine him going to Malta. It's really hot there. It doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who's going to get an easy tan out there. <laughs> Shall we let, stop them talking and start letting the darts do the talking? Yeah, come on, Mark. We'll get them on. Yeah, OK, we'll let Marco do the job of keeping them quiet. These two better not be quiet in commentary, Paul Nicholson and Matthew Wegger. I've picked on Paul a little bit with his predictions and things like that over the last couple of days. I'm going to give you a bit of a rest on that. I'm going to put Matthew Wegger on the spot. If you could pick a dream live league slash super series group, what would it be and why? That's uh, an easy one. I would like a presenters slash commentators week because I think it'd be fun to get us all up on the stage. I would invite Chris Murphy, Abby, Henry, myself. I don't know how good Marco is. Maybe Marco. And I'd do that because I'd fancy my chances of getting through. So a bit of a bias reason there. This one was fireworks yesterday. Even though it's not November yet, so this was some game. 4-0 Scott Walters won this. And this was the game that he took out those three big finishes. 100, 117 and 124. But if you notice, when I went through that lineup, and I said I'd like a bit of a, a crew week, I left out Paul Nicholson and I also left out Chris Mason. Oh, first did you? luck, it's Richard to throw first. Game on. I'll get you that drink tomorrow. Who did you have in your crew week? Henry. 45. Move. Abby. Myself. You can see where this is going. Yes. You'd win. Well, I'd hope so anyway. <laughs> it's it's Scott Mitchell. Nope. No, he wouldn't be invited. I'll let you tell him that. 83. Because he will be here next week. Scott Mitchell's actually going to be in the commentary box next week, which is very good. Scott Walters is going to be here tomorrow. 100. Interesting that Henry talked about these two playing pairs with each other in Malta. Doesn't strike me as the right kind of climate for Richard's complexion. 
Just take your factor 50, Northy. Otherwise, you might have to do a Stephen Bunting from earlier this year who got severely sunburned on one of the European tour trips. How do you think he's feeling right now as he destroys one of his stems and leaves three flights 14. on the floor? Got a smile to Marco's face as well, didn't it? Poor smile to Scott's face. Everyone's loving it. Yeah, he's just trying to refocus there. It was the right thing to do. Good bit of experience showing there from Scott. Look at this. 125. Yeah, Northey's got a bit of a, a job on now, hasn't he? After that 4 3 win for Burgoyne. He's now got on two points Scott for the day. 96. Got four points in the group. 56. Richard nice Judicoy, 156. And he could. 100. Scott to Jim Judicoy, McEwen 14. and James Horrell. A big favour by beating his pair's partner uh, here. That's game shorter than the first lap. There's the first Scott notch Walters. on the belt. And it is a break as well. He's proving to be a very hard nut to crack. Second lag is Scott to throw first. Game on. What do you know? Scott Walters against Northy, and he finds his first double with his first dart. Some, some games you can't even finish your dinner. And then against certain opponents, you just can't miss. I suppose coming from the same area, they'll be very familiar with each other, won't they? 95. I think that provides a level of comfort, actually. We could see it beforehand. We've never seen people waving up and celebrating up to the presenter area before. When was that happening? Yesterday. 50. When you was coming back down again. Oh, really? Yeah, both of them. It was so uh, so close to just putting their arms around each other. One hundred. Some sweet Caroline. If anybody has watched me do the European tour with Chris Murphy before. They know my attitude towards Sweet Caroline. 43. The most overplayed song in history. I can't stand it when Daryl Gurney's there on One the edge of the stage 36. getting the other person to... Sweet... Oh, whatever. Get on with the darts, will you? I find it funny that Daryl doesn't even know the words of the song he's used <laughs> for years. That's so true. 43, Richard Tudor Guire, 170. I think the more befitting walk on song for Daryl would be The Chain by Fleetwood Mac because 60. Daryl Gurney likes cars. So a very car-related song because it used to be the Formula One theme. That would that would suit him a bit more, not Sweet Caroline. But having said that, he has 81. got himself Richard a nice Judy big fan base because of it. So I'll give him his props on that one. Yeah, nice approach there from Northy, Lionheart, Mouth of the South. Pick your nickname. Yeah, it's the Mouth of the South, you know. That's why I said it. 132. Richard, you required 24. Double six. Don't miss threes. 18. Scott because he knows what's coming 92. next. Based on what's happened with Walters the last couple of days, he's going to hit this probably with two double 18s. Well, he's gone for the 60 for double six and he's just missed it. 45. Richard Chile requires six. This is not an ideal double for the way his darts go on the board. Yeah, that's, that's a really good the second flag. Richard North. I think. I don't know what you think about this map, but it looked like, to me like he was going for the right-hand side of the bed there. Third and if he missed it low, he'd still have all of the left side to, to aim at. If that's the case, very intelligent. Did you see yesterday 45. that he's got a wealth of knowledge in Adam Sandler movies? Too much knowledge, yeah. Did he say which his favourite one was? 83. Not that I remember. Which one do you think would be his favourite? 
One hundred grown ups, or grown ups two. Big fan of Billy Madison myself. Like that one, good film. Billy Madison's your favourite. Um, Forty-five. I'd like to an absolute favourite. It'll be blended. Oh, that's controversial because a lot of people would say that's nowhere near as good as Fifty First Dates. Forty-one. You know what mine is? Just go with it. I was going to go click. 57. Just go with it with Jennifer Aniston. That's that's a great film. 81. I do like Happy Gilmore, though. Who doesn't? Tell you what, Richard. After today's done, I want you to get some sort of thing to keep your flights in. You've been all over this stage, picking them off the floor. 100. 100. You could use all sorts of things to keep your flights in the stems. You can got rings, hole punch rings. Some people have used glue. You can actually get stems that don't need rings. They've got catchments on the inside of the polycarbon. 100. Having said that, if the flights go on the floor every single time... 126. Scott, you require and the points are going in the right sections. Who are we to complain? 116 for a 2-1 lead for Walters. Just isn't finding the same kind of 86. approach work that he did yesterday. Richard and North is getting more 40. looks. In fact, he didn't even get a look at a double yesterday against Scott. Yeah, that's game this short time, in the third. It's good. Richard North. 20 darts is good enough for the 2 1 lead for the man in blue. Ford Larkin's got to throw first. Game on. He's definitely playing better with these darts tonight than he was with the other ones yesterday. So if you are going to make your way One to Saturday night, Richard, I would say keep these darts in your hand. One hundred. Scott Walters is in the same sort of bed of things is Jim McHugh and he's using a moulded flight but they look like they've been at the bottom of a rabbit cage. They're a bit aged. 58. It's funny how some people just refuse to stop using something until they are completely battered because One on the end, those stem and flight combos are not cheap. Andy Jenkins was telling me when he was toying with them a weeks ago, Scott, he couldn't believe that they were about £12 a set. you got to pay for progress. 100. Walters makes progress in like four. 52. Scott should require Bit of a visit of resignation there from yeah, that's the red-headed Richard line. North. Scott Walters. 2-2 two -two in this one. A tighter game than yesterday. Fifth we talked about ink to throw first. on dark game. players' arms and things like that. That is one massive piece of work on his one left on inner forearm. Looks like two flowers. I wonder what the story is behind the floral work on the left arm of Northy. 60. I have tattoos on... A couple of parts of my body. I've got a big sleeve on my left arm. 100. Got some demons inset in a tribal pattern. And I've got some words on my stomach, which I, could, I wish I could actually get removed. 58. Sixty. Now that he's got a chance of getting through this group, you just sense that Richard is trying to squeeze the lemon for 
a bit more than what he expected to, maybe. 99. That's the feed-on effect of getting that win against Hurrell a little bit earlier on in the campaign. It was the last game of yesterday's session, of 61. course. 61. He's got 60 on the floor there, but that's what happens when you've got a big, fat barrel like that clattering against another one. That's just physics. One hundred. It's that phone of victory over Pete Berger and it's given him a chance. But he's still averaging in the mid-70s. 68. Oh, that was a great visit after dart one. It's turned out to be a disaster. One on the own, 40. Richard Judy Guar, 92. That's 60 on the floor. Or well, the big collision with the barrel has really cost him. He could have been sitting on double 16 with three darts here, but now, judging by what he's done previously, surely it's double 18, double 18. 56. Scott should require 44. No time for Walters. He's already broken Northy in this match. Can he do it again? Yeah, that's yes, he Sean can with a surgical line. last dart. Walters. And he could cause Northy all sorts of issues if he takes this leg of the next. Six like it's got to throw first. Game on. I don't think six points is going to be enough. I think you're going to have to get eight points tonight. And North will finish his campaign first. Against McEwen in match eight. 58. If he's got to win that by some distance. 60. It's possible, don't get me wrong, but... It's getting to skin it teeth time, as they would say in Yorkshire. Ooh, Richard. That's not like 80. you. Just frustration, isn't it? Ninety-four. We haven't seen the real Richard North. When you say there, that's not like you. Nothing we've seen from Richard's. Like Eighty-one. You. If you're Walter seeing that show of frustration as well, that makes you think I've got him exactly where I want him. Sixty. Now, Walters might be through, but he's still got a job to do for himself. One hundred. With one more leg in this contest, he wins the group on points. He will not be caught. Sixty. And why not leave a one thirty? Everybody loves a one thirty, right? It's a very delightful finish. Sixty one. It's not the board. It's not happening to anybody else. Scott should require one hundred. From an experimental point of view, you have to assume that he's constantly hitting the barrel. Dark players tend to blame something that is out of their control. One hundred. The game five. was almost out of Richard should require one hundred and twenty one. But this has got nothing to do with collisions right now because it's three different parts of the board that he needs. 97. Scott See how it didn't happen there 25. because it's further away. Double eight. Game. Walters Shots wins and, and puts match. North in the Scott basement. Walters. So he wins the group and he will be very, very chipper about that. With 67% on the doubles, he was excellent in that department. In a scoring sense, it wasn't a great game, but North, he can only get to six points now. Only time will tell as to whether... He has put himself in the position where he has got too much to do. Pete Burgoyne has got a chance to get to six points himself. He's got more matches left than North, though. He's up against James Hurrell after this break.
Welcome back to the Moja Super Series where Walters is winning one continues. It's a 4-2 success for him against Richard North, which severely dents his hopes of qualification for tomorrow night's final. Let's have a look then at the stats from that one. An 82.9 average was what won it in the end for Walters. Added with the four out of six on the outer ring, including a high checkout of 44. He played some mesmeric stuff against Norfi in yesterday's fixture. Just did enough to get over the line in that one. And this is what it does then to the league table as we head into the final furlong of Group B action. Scott Walters there out in front on 12 points. He's got a real comfortable margin at the top of the group. James Harden and Jim McEwen on six points respectively. Now North and Burgoyne both on four. It is starting to hot up most definitely in the race for the top three in Group B, which will progress their way through to tomorrow night's finals. Well, James Hubble can put himself in a really strong position to qualify if he can get victory in our next match against Pete Bergoy. We've seen some really good stuff from Hubble this evening, including this 130 checkout, which he got earlier on in his Group B campaign. There we go, against Pete Bergoyne in yesterday's fixture. It's one of the real highlights for Hubble in yesterday's action as he wrapped up a 4-0 victory in the reverse last time out winning it with this 42 combination finish as clean as a whistle will it be repeat for the hill billy it'll be a victory which does his chances the world of good pete burgoyne has to win this fixture you feel let's get the boys on the stage they're behind us marco meyer is the man in the middle your commentary team is the asset paul nicholson and prime time Matthew Edgar. Thanks, Henry. Point of no return for Pete Burgoyne then, if he loses this match. James Hurrell will be out of sight. Burgoyne so far tonight has won against McEwen by four legs to three and lost to North by four legs to nil. But if he was to beat the England captain here and beat Scott Walters he would get to eight points and it's still possible that he could qualify but there is a scenario where the combatants for Saturday night will be solidified first in the next line, two games Peter throw first game on if James Hurrell wins here and if Jim McEwen beats Richard North that's it the top three will be out of sight. One on the end, 14. And Burgoyne and North will be gone. Will it be so? Or is there more in the story? 58. I don't think these groups ever give them that clear and obvious too. There's always a spanner in the works. and One on the end, 14. The way he started this game, back-to-back -back 140s. He's got a very commanding walk, hasn't he? There's a bit more strut in that walk at the moment rather than the looking up to the sky and questioning everything he's doing. The last thing Hurrell needs is to take it to a game with Jim McEwen at the end. 60. If you think James Hurrell is safe, think again. His biggest saving grace right now is that leg difference at plus four. It's a massive ally. 137. BG it could indeed be his saving grace. This is a great leg for Pete. 137. Somebody James switched him on. 126. Bullseye. 101. Just Beach for a moment, 24. the feast was thinking that leg was out. Double six. Twelve. James he didn't really scare 25. the twelves or the sixes. He's living every shot. Yeah, that's oh, a really nice the find line. for Hillbilly James Hurrell. Hurrell. Why does he call Hillbilly then? I don't think he's got anything to do with Gloucestershire. First don't find many Hillbillies on. in Gloucestershire. I think it's to do with his appearance. 
and he's got like a cartoon hillbilly on his shirt. Obviously not now. One on the end, twenty nine. Like hillbilly on the back, and he looks like that character. One hundred and eighty. Nothing wrong with scoring. You know, when it comes to Cod and Carrick and lookalikes, I, I wouldn't have said that James Hover looks like a hillbilly. The only thing that comes to mind when it comes to hillbillies is uh, that old 100 TV sitcom called The Beverly Hillbillies. Did you ever watch that? Well, apparently they struck black gold where they were living and they inherited lots of money because they, they sold the land or something like that. 95. And they went, the hillbillies went to Beverly Hills, hence the Beverly Hillbillies. I didn't watch a great deal of it, but I know the backstory of it. 55. James, you require 137. That slip into the five for Pete. Offers James six here. So really offers him an opportunity to set up. 57 would be nice. 59. As in 57 with the dart, not in total. 40. Oh, it's his James turn to get a really 70. clattering collision with his own stuff. It really did cost Richard North in the previous yeah, game. game short and it's second cost line. Burgoyne James nothing Hull. here. He wasn't going to take out 166 anyway. Well, that's a really nice clean take there from Third line gets captain. beat to throw first. Game on. So far, so good. That's exactly what I'd be saying to myself right now if 84. I was in this 2-0 position. So far, so good. Do it again. 140. One hundred and eighty. How typical is this? He's got two maximums, averaging one hundred and two, and he's losing two nil. Yeah, James Hall finding a bit extra at the moment. That's just dropped off because they're only at one hundred and seven. Playing well, fifty percent on his doubles, but Pete. One hundred and twenty-three. Has found what we was talking about. Yesterday, but he can be a dangerous player. I can't believe I didn't reference this before. Oh, oh look at that. Fourth one the match. Keeping Mark Meyer honest. 114. Having said that, oh, that almost bust the score. He'd have hit the treble 18. That was visit over. 82. It is somewhat James fortunate. Look at the bullseye. What a strange visit that was. I'll come back to my point in a second. But first, Hurrell's going for... Would have been the bullseye had he got... 63. Beats you require 32. 20. Yeah, that's game short. Lovely the leg there from Pete. Bieber going. I believe that is his best leg of the last couple of nights. Ford Lark yeah, you're talking about to throw cartoon first. character hillbillies. There's nobody better than Cletus. The slack George Yorkel from The Simpsons. One on the M40. Test your Simpsons knowledge now, Matt Edgar. Do you know who Cletus's wife is? What is Cletus's wife called? One hundred. I'm not going to say the name of the kids because I think he's got about twenty. One hundred and eighty. One hundred. Just eighty one. One eighty. 
and James Horrell was his third of the game, but the fifth in total. Two for Burgoyne, three for James Horrell. You're ignoring the question. 41. James, you require 100. Yeah. I'll 100. give you until the beginning of the next leg, which could be very, very close because tops, tops. Yeah, that's game oh, show in the fourth. That's the third James time Horrell. tonight we've seen tops, tops. North has done it. Walters Fifth has done it. Is Peter's throw first. Now Hurrell's done it. There's only two people left to do a tops, tops for a full book. Burgoyne's got to do it, and McEwen's got to do it as well. Okay, any ideas? No. Brandine. Good, uh, good voice as well. No, I can do a good Cletus impression. But Ninety-five. Don't want to insult anybody. It's a bit <laughs> when he was told to dump something in the lake in the movie. Sixty. I can't. I simply can't. It's just, just an incredible character. One on the end, forty. Seventy-seven. So we'll go to the plan. So far for Horrell. I think he's safe if he wins this game, you know. Only one game left for Burgoyne. One on the end, 40. I think also if he wins it this leg, because the leg difference. Again, yeah. Another plus three on there. Absolutely. There's another three off for going. 59. James, you require 126. It's in your hands, James. With one game left, you could have it done. And this has been quite 24. the performance. You think about his personal best so far in any game he's played here at the Super Series. 103.79 is his personal 32. best. This is better. Game Much shot better. 110.59. What a performance from the England captain to all but seal his spot in the finals. He's now got a 100% record in making Saturday night when he comes here, and it will be so again. 95 from Pete Burgoyne. He improved his average from his previous match by about 20 points, but he didn't get anywhere close to the WDF number one, who had the best game of this week. Incredible. So another game coming your way, McEwen and North. Northy will bow out after that.
The hillbilly rocks, the hillbilly's on a roll. James Hurrell is into tomorrow night's finals here at the Modus Super Series, courtesy of that victory against Pete Burgoyne in our previous encounter. Not sure if he's going to be celebrating with some moonshine and some meat, but he could be doing the hillbilly rock and roll with me on the stage tomorrow night because he's got every chance now being the £5,000 winner of week one. And have a look at that, 110 point. 5.9 average, 4 out of 6 on the double, 66.67, and that ton out finished on tops, tops as well. If you're going to seal your way into tomorrow night's final, that is the way to do it. So let's dot the I's and cross the T's in terms of Howell's progression then into tomorrow night's final by having a look at the league table. Walters out on top on 12 points, Howell on 8, and now the battle lines have been drawn for third place in Group B it is between Jim McEwen, Richard North and Pete Burgoyne. McEwen is in the driver's seat and he can seal his place there with victory in our next match against Richard North. Can he do so? Let's find out in the company or commentary. But, but before we do that, let's have a look at yesterday's action between this pair because it was McEwen that sealed a 4-3 victory against Richard North in the reverse fixture. These are the closing moments of that particular match. That top ceiling, a 115 checkout to see himself through to the final. So let's get the boys on the stage and let's hand over to our commentary team. It's Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Thanks, Henry. Jim McEwen will be hoping for the same result because if he wins this match, he's going to be through. Richard North will be out, and so will Pete Burgoyne. Simple as that. The top three will be out of reach, out of sight. We would have two matches to finish our campaign in Group B with no hope for the Chasers. It was always going to be a tough ask for Burgoyne and North, but right now, the predicament for Richard is he must beat Jim McEwen and hope that McEwen is beaten by Hurrell in game 10. Not out of the question, considering what Horrell's first just like done. First Jim the throw first, game on. And what Jim McEwen hasn't done tonight. And if Richard North wins this 4-2, or better, it is just a straight shootout in that last game. But maybe somebody's walking Chucky up. Hang on a minute. 60. Are we in that movie, Honey, I Enlarged the Stems? Different dart as well. Yeah, he's gone back to the darts he was using yesterday. 100. He's gone to a Luke Humphreys style long, long stem in a red colour. I hate, I hate to say it. 121. He's, he's done it because of the collisions he had in the, in the previous match. But make your mind up, Richard. Come on. He's got a real problem figuring out what to use. 125. Do you think that might have something to do with the fact that he's not on tour anymore? He's just had too much in the way of variety 26. in this department. Jim, you require 96. Is he not sticking with something and giving it a long, a long go? Always looking for the answer, what's going to get him back to the tour. And he believes that's probably in the equipment. It's not in the equipment. 52. It just isn't. Once you've got something that works, you have to give it time. 135, Jim, you Can't require 44. from game to game. I know that Peter Wright does it well, but he's an anomaly. Double top for McEwen. And look where Richard is. On a number he can't finish. 24. It's usually in this spot that the protagonist gets two treble 20s. 30. We've had Jim, a change of equipment 20. twice. We've had a change of rhythm more than once. He's definitely searching for something in his game. And you think that maybe he's not going to find it here in week one of stage two. 
110. But then again, he Richie might. Richie Chiriquan, 129. Two double 18s, maybe. 75. Oh, the methodology was right. The execution, Jim not so. 10. Just hit the barrel. Now, Jim doesn't no give score. much away. Richard, you require 54. But you can read from the body language and the facial expressions now that he's getting a bit cheesed off with what's happening. Woohoo! That was close. Yeah, that's game short than the first leg. Richard You're Moore. a lucky boy, aren't you, Richard? That was almost a bust with one dart. Second leg, hit that trouble 18, I would never have let you get that down. But then again, he has won the leg. 60. You and I are both coaches, Matt, okay? And we talk to clients all the time about the things that make you reliable and somewhat 16. deadly when throwing at targets. There is one thing that every player needs if they're going to be world-class. Rhythm. 55. Richards is all over the place the last couple of days. He is mystified with his game. He has lost. I think he needs someone to give him some tips 100. so he can go forward because if you don't know what you're doing, it's not going to magically come to you. You need someone to give you the advice. 140. He's going up there with questions, isn't he? He's going up there. Trial and error. You could be doing that for the rest of your career. Trial and error. If you can't figure it out, ask for help. 96. Many a good darts coach out there who can give you something to work on to have you moving forward. But in order to make things work, you've got to have good communication with somebody and you have to trust the coach that you go to and 97. implement what they give you. You can't just say, I went to a coach and I'm just going to continue to do my own thing. It's a waste of time. If someone gives you a plan, 96. stick to it and trust Jim, the process. Jim, you require 148. You can say what you like about Jim. He might not have played his best arts this week, but he's constantly doing his thing in rhythm. 58. Richard, you require 92. You've got to like these checkouts because they're in the 90s, Matt. 60. Jim, you require 90. 92 especially, good year. Summer Slam at Wembley Arena. 1990. Italia 90. Killer by Adamski was out that year as well. Brilliant song. Bullseye. 65. Bullseye was still on the air in 1990. Richard, you require 32. This is where that long stem can be yeah, that's game short in the second very, round. very difficult Richard to navigate, North. but that was a really good shot from Richard. 2-0 against McEwen, and so far, Third this game is Jim the throw first. Game on. He's going his way. Two things need to happen. Just to re-emphasize to everybody watching on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel and everybody on Sporty Stuff TV. 100. North needs to win, and then he needs McEwen to lose to Horrell. 22. If you're Richard North right now, are you thinking... One on the I've got him 40. where I want him, because he's not playing his best darts. Can he sense the frustration from his opponent? One on the M40. I think sometimes that hope and opportunity that presents makes you try a little bit too hard. If someone's trying too hard, it, it tends to come across in their facial expressions. And I'm feeling 60. more of that from Jim at the minute than I am from Richard.
100. Have you ever thrown with a stem that long? No, I don't. I don't like a, a long stem. I prefer the shorter one. You get a, it's easier to find the balance point. It works for you. 88. There's only one person on tour right now who uses a stem that long. That's Luke Humphreys. Just because it works for Humphreys doesn't mean it works for anybody else. In fact, Richard is the only other person I've Jim seen Yuri try Glam, these stems. I don't even know where you get them. Maybe he made his own out of straws. That's a great second dart. 77. Chance Richard for 3 0. 152. What was that score you mentioned? Oh, he's going the Keegan Brown 152. Two trouble 19s and double. 98. Jim, you require 36. Don't miss this time, Jim. It's 4 2, that score, wasn't it, that you were talking about? Don't miss, Jim. Oh, beautiful yeah, dart. Came short on the third leg. Jim McEwen. But if Richard North does win 4-2, he will finish his campaign on six points and minus four. Four is Richard to throw first. Game on. And it would be Jim McEwen on six points and minus four in that spot. 100. Tired, isn't he? Yeah, Jim. he is. Proving Matt's point that the last game of the session would be a win and in situation for McEwen. Lose. 140. And you're out. Simple as that. And sandwiched in between, we've got Walters against Burgoyne. 121. Pete's chances, well, with minus 11 in his leg difference right now, you fancy he's out. Six points. And minus seven, the best he can do. That's not going to get it 16. done. So, unfortunately for Pete, it is sayonara for him with one game remaining. 100. One hundred and forty. Hey, if Richard gets out of this jam, I'm gonna have to start calling him Houdini. He lost first three games. One hundred yesterday evening. Jim, you require one hundred and sixty-one. Well, ultimately, he was absolutely put to the sword by Scott Walters. But if he can somehow get through this group, It'll be mystifying as to how 96. he's done it. 96. Richard, you require 80. Oh, he went for tops, tops again. Didn't work this time. But that did. Yeah, that's game short. 3 the 1 North. Line. Richard North. We talked about the 4 2 scenario. How about the 4 1 scenario? Fifth flag is Jim to throw first. Game on. That would get him to six points and minus three. And put McEwen on six points of minus five. Still a knockout scenario regardless. 59. If North wins this, but I didn't think we we're going to be having this situation at all. I reckon McEwen. One on the end, 25. When was the last time you played nine straight days, Matt? If at all. Yeah, I can't think of a time that I did. He's literally on fumes. You can see it in the 85. Eyes. You can see it in the mood. He's not the kind of person to lose his cool. He's getting frustrated. 96. I think the most I've ever played, if I remember rightly, was six. The Champions League. Yeah, Championship League, followed by a day of qualifiers. Two Pro Tour events, and I played like an exhibition on the on the Monday. So six days, and I was I was done after that. I actually took the weekend off from Benidorm at the end of October 2011 because I was so tired. 
one hundred and thirty-seven. Well, that's weird. One eighty followed by a one three seven lever tops. Somebody's woke him up. Ninety-two. Jim, you only hard gas like he probably is. Every now and again, you'll get a little burst of energy from nowhere. Yeah, that's came short in the fifth lap. Thirteen dollars from McEwen. absolutely nowhere. He's played poorly in this game. Yes, I know he's averaging 87. Six laggers, Richard is through first. Game on. Well, that was a great leg. One Let's look at the 4 3 scenario, for instance. That would get Northy to six points and minus five. McEwen to six points and minus three. 92. Still, he has to beat James Hurrell if he doesn't beat Richard North. 81. I'm amazed that Northy hasn't poked his head around the corner and asked about any of his averages yet. 134. Good leg all of a sudden. Very tight. 64. I think he's definitely found something with this setup because he's averaging 86 and a half. And that's better than what he's been doing most of the time anyway. It's McEwen who's got the maxes. 97. But North's got the position. 60. That position has been given away. 98 remain with one dart. 140. Which do you require 161? This is to keep himself in it. Eighty-seven, Jim. You require thirty-eight. You take us all the way to a one-leg shootout to be within one leg of qualification. Yeah, that's game show. That's what's six happening. Leg. Jim McEwen. Jim has the darts. One-leg shootout to find out if Northy is alive or out. Seventh and final leg is Jim the throw first. Even game if Northy on. does break in this seventh leg, he's gonna have to wait. But all of a sudden, Jim McEwen has found some life. He's doing the old Undertaker sit-up. 134. 35. If McEwen does get through here, Matt, how soundly will he sleep? But even, even right there, North are using the 19s to start. He's using different approaches on the dartboard. Different equipment, different rhythms. I can't remember the last time I saw somebody play here One on the who looked 14. so lost with their game. Ninety. It's very, very late. In fact, it's nearly one o'clock in the morning, and Jim McEwen has come alive. One hundred and eighty. What a leg of darts from the Scotsman. Forty-five. Jim, you require forty-seven. Quite an incredible performance when you consider he has played poorly for twenty-four hours. Game. But he hasn't Shot played poorly there. The match. That's Jim an eleven McEwen. darter to finish things off, and he's qualified himself for Saturday night. Richard North is gone, and so is Pete Burgoyne. We have our three combatants through in Group C. It's all about position now, because McEwen will take on James Hurrell in the last match, 95.52. And considering how he played earlier in that match, I really don't know where that came from, but full credit to Chucky, who has found his way to Saturday night once again. Walters and Burgoyne will go toe-to-toe -to -toe in match number nine, Walters looking to embellish on his position at the top of the table on 12 points with Burgoyne already eliminated.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And the fun has only just begun here at the Modus Super Series. A fantastic Series 1. Series 2 beginning this week. And we know now the identity of all six finalists into the finals of Week 1. That is because Jim McEwen has secured victory against Richard North, ending his hopes of qualification for the finals. Let's have a quick check then of the averages from that one because Jim McEwen put on a real spurt towards the end of that game to end up with a 95.52 average. Three maximums in there. Fourth from 16 on the checkers. That's going to be something you want to brush up upon but the marathon for McEwen continues because it means he's going to be playing for a 10th consecutive day tomorrow when it comes to finals night here at the live lounge in Portsmouth Richard North eliminated from the process and of course you can join us at the live lounge tomorrow night for the final head over to dartshop.tv and you can get tickets for all 12 weeks of this particular phase ahead of finals night at the start of 2024. So let's move on to game nine of ten then this evening. It sees Scott Walters, the winner of Group B, in action. He takes on Pete Burgoyne. These were the pair's first games of Group B yesterday, and it was Walters who won in a last leg decider by four legs to three. It began that magnificent run yesterday, which has helped him to qualify for tomorrow night's final for Pete Burgoyne. He'll be looking to end this phase on a high for Walters. It's about keeping that winning momentum going into tomorrow night's final. Let's see who's going to get the spoils in this one in the company of our commentary team. It's Matthew Edgar and first, Paul Nicholson. Thanks, Henry. Two matches to go and now Pete can relax. Not in the knowledge that he's coming back, but unfortunately this is his swan song for this week. He won't be happy with his performances, that's for sure, but he's got a crack at the table topper to dent the armory of the 39-year-old from Winchester. We're going to hear a bit of motorhead on Saturday night. It's not actually that far away. We're clicking over to 1 o'clock in the morning, so we're only 19 hours away from finals first time. First back, it's got to throw first. Game on. So now I suppose we have to ask the question. 100. We have Walters. We have McEwen. We have Horrell. We have Owen. We have Graham. We've got Collie. 100. That's a pretty good finals night. Who's winning it? Robert Owen's the rightful favourite. 100. Oh, well Quite a few things to think about. Yeah, I agree. At the end of the show tonight, Henry and I will 40. give you the group's breakdown as to who will be in group one, who will be in group two. One on the M40. But there are some protagonists in there who could possibly deliver some fireworks. I think it's between Walters, Owen, and Collie. 80. Personally. But Scott, based on what 81. we've seen from James Hurrell in his previous match, we can't forget about him. Considering what Hurrell's done over the last few months, 41. it would add to his 2022 CV if he was to win a stage here as well. Nice financial bonus of £5,000 up for grabs in a matter of a day's time. Scott Chili so when he's in the first leg, yeah, that's game shot. And the they're first trying leg. to take the breath Scott away from Walters. the referee. <laughs> Shame on you, Scott. He's only refereed something Second in the region of the throw first. 94 Game. games this week. Come on. Thirty. 
Actually, we had Charlie at the start of the week, didn't we? He hasn't done 94. They've both done 94. And the way Scott Walters is playing right now, oh, he doesn't no, want to see the end of the, the session. Night. Had that game yesterday, didn't against Richard North. 77.47. Three ton plus outs. That's no longer the best performance of the week. That belongs to Hurrell. 110.59. Someone's going to have to go something to beat that this week. 45. I've got to be honest, I, I actually said about Hurl earlier in the week that he's the kind of person who puts in a lot of mid-90s stuff. Maybe the odd high 90s or maybe around 100, 101, but I didn't expect to see him average 110 this week. I didn't think he was in that 22. form. 22. But maybe that will open up the can of worms of what James can genuinely do 100 scary thing is that walters when he got that 105 it could have been so much better just a few loose scores 38 Scott the early portions of legs three and four cost him maybe one of the best averages we've ever seen in this tournament format 80 to get the feeling that scott wants to get this job done he wants to win this group by a margin. And if he does win this match, he will win the group by four points. Got you required 24. We get the feed. Yeah, that's game short in the second part. Scott the last Walters. Game. Let everyone know that he's got the best average of the week. And he's come out. Third lock, it's Scott the throw first. Game on. There's Burgoyne looking around, just taking in the scenery before it's all over. 81. I gave him a fighting chance at the start of Thursday's play, but it hasn't worked out for him. 85. Just throwing with 83. such purpose, isn't he? And both of them are looking at their hands. I've been out there. It's fairly warm. One when there's no people here, but it's a lot warmer when it, it's full of people, which it will be in about 17 hours' time. 140. And we are going to have some extra action here, aren't we, in the coming months? We're going to look at having some of the belt matches 13. with the ADC here at the Modus Live Lounge. 32. Yeah, keep an eye out on dartshop.tv and the ADC website to see what kind of matches will be coming to Portsmouth as well as the weekly finals. All of a sudden, 140. We're going Scott finding to find a few maxims and a fair few big scores. We've had four maxes in this game. There's only three legs old. 100. B2 requires 64. There you go. There's proof of it. Just in case you didn't believe me. Double 16. 48. Scott and Walters requires 60. To get to 3 0. Tops. 10s. 50. B2 requires 16. Other side, Pete. Eight. Scott, you require ten. We haven't seen Scott on double yeah, five that much because he's back. been so good on Scott tops balls. and tens. But he's racing through this game. In just over six Board minutes, like he's Peter taken the first, first three legs. Game on. Just to give you an indication of that fastest game that we've ever had. Graham Musher, when he got the fastest Mighty. game had disposed of four legs in less time than what we've seen in this game, which really is saying something. 58.
got a good pace, hasn't he, very much? That's probably why Chris Murphy put him on his 16. list earlier of people he likes watching without a tour card. I wonder if Graham's going to get a tour card for next year. If he doesn't, he'll be spending a fair bit of time here. One but that's a fifth maximum in this match. As far as yesterday's game's concerned, I'm just going to have to tally 57. this up. 57. When these guys played yesterday, they had seven maximums in that match. They got five here. 43. So in two uncompleted matches, they've already had 12. What is it about these two going head to head? One on the end, which gives 35. us one eighty five. Remarkable. I'm sure there are a lot of people thinking because of the fact that they got a lot of one eighties yesterday that more than two and a half one eighties in this match was almost a certainty. Well, you were right. I don't think your odds would have been very good. Fifty nine. What a way this would Scott be to Judy sign Glenn, off from Group B. Fifty-eight. Well, Berger is one of the only players tonight who hasn't had a tops tops finish. Oh, he's just gone and spoiled it. Double ten. Yeah, that's and he doesn't spoil the, the checkout as a whole. He's Be not going to be bageled. Well, not again. Northy bageled him earlier. The only four Fifth nil of the night. Gets Scott to throw first. Game on. That was a very pensive stance at the back of the stage, wasn't it? As if to say, well, I've loved being here. One Everybody who is here 40. tomorrow, all the very best here. And that practice room's got quiet all of a sudden because Richard North is gone. 37. Did I hear rightly earlier that Richard North was playing Lady Gaga in there? 56. And the Cranberries as well. Oh, yeah, he was doing a bit of uh, the old Willie O'Connor's walk on song. Zombie. 77. One nice use of the Treble 18. Beautiful darts. Great standard. Just very, very strong. 57. And if you are going to win on Saturday night, you're going to need a very good level of consistency. And I don't remember the last time that Scott has been this consistent. Chris Murphy said earlier on today that he end, believes he's not nine. seen Scott Walters play this well before. I would have to agree. His confidence has got to be sky high going into the week one oh, finals. No, and another no, maximum. No, no, no. Number 13 in the head-to-head -to -head over the couple of game days. Shot. And that's the end and of the match. match. A Scott brilliant, Walters. brilliant game that was to watch. Very, very entertaining indeed. If you wanted 180s, this is the fixture for you. But Walters does the double, and he gets a 94.46 average, 67% of the doubles again. And he signs off from Group B as the champ with 14 points. He will not be caught, regardless of what happens in our 10th match of this late session, because Horrell will take on McEwen in match 10 after this break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we're joined up on the balcony by the winner of Group B, Scott Walters. Scott, we're glad to have you up on the balcony. We can talk about you progressing now <laughs> up here on the balcony following the curse of last time. Yeah, um, well, we all know what happened last time. Um, I feel I felt actually kind of good this time, um, but a tough group, and so I knew I had to play. There was no guaranteed in this group at all. So, yeah, I was really happy to get through. Is that the most comfortable you felt in this competition this week? I, f I feel yesterday was. Yesterday I felt comfortable, I felt good within myself. I didn't feel tired, I didn't feel um, like the game wasn't there for me. Uh, tonight I did, I felt a bit more tired, I think, maybe because of last night. But I'm just glad I got through the games tonight. But yeah, I felt really good. It's interesting that the boys in the commentary box are actually mentioning about your performances the last couple of nights and, and looking at the numbers, it's the best that you've played it. Does it feel like at the minute you're playing some of the best darts you've ever played? Yeah, um, well, I've changed my setup, um, changed my darts um, recently, uh, which was a mistake, but I'm glad it was a mistake and it, it's working out well. I'm playing really well. Um, I, wasn't, I was happy with the darts I had the setup with, with the kites, but my cover shots were never there. Um, which showed quite a lot. Um, but with these ones, I'm hitting a lot of the triple nineteens. Maybe not tonight, but I have been, and I practice a lot more of them, and they're going well. So yeah, I'm enjoying them. It's interesting. You were speaking to our colleague Jack Garwood yesterday, and you were talking about how you want to make this your full-time profession going forward. How much has being here at the Super Series and in the past the lively given you that extra motivation to make this sport your full-time occupation, your full-time job? Well, I got, as everyone would know, I got in on a, on a rebound of, uh, I think it was, um, I forget, Jay, Jay, Jason, Jason, Jamie, something like that. Yeah. Pulled out because of his arm. And I got called in and asked if I could fill in on a Thursday night about half past 11 at night. And I stepped in and I've gone with it every day. Every time they've called me, asked me if I want to play, I've played. And this stage in here, I mean, the, I, like, I loved it the Southampton State. I loved it down there. Every player that you get involved with, it's lovely meeting them and the staff, the backroom team, yourself. Everyone else is brilliant. Everyone's always willing to lend a hand on anything you need. But here on that stage, it's a whole different ball game. And this is where, when you get that feeling of walking up, getting called up, you just think, yeah, this is what I want to do all the time. And this is what I'm going to try and do. And just finally, you were here last week for the Champions League finals. You're now going to play on that stage in front of a crowd tomorrow night. What's that feeling going to be like when that motorhead track is played on that walk-on onto the stage tomorrow? I've never actually... I've played in front of crowds before, but that's always like county and other, other things, you know, like WDF stuff. But never on a walk-on of my own. So it's going to be different. It's going to be something I'm going to embrace, something I'm going to learn from so hopefully i'll play like i did yesterday tomorrow night well we look forward to that that is our group b winner there scott walters but just one more game to go then to complete group b it's james howell up against jim McCune, and we're going to watch it in the company of our commentary team it's paul nicholson and matthew edgar thanks henry really nice to hear from scott a great interview there actually quite insightful into the equipment that he's been using why he's changed and what kind of mindset he could possibly have going into later on tonight. But he will be joined by Jim McEwen and James Hurrell. The pressure is off in this game as the England captain rubber stamped his Saturday night invitation with the performance of the entire week, average wise at least. But Chucky, he got his way there by beating Richard North in the game before that very entertaining Walters Burgoyne match which gave us six maximums. First like is James to throw first. Game on. Yesterday when these played, it was Hurrell winning by four legs to one, and there was only one maximum in that match. Yes, just the one. One on the name, 40. You're a child of the 90s, so who sang that song? Just the one. Emo. No. One hundred. was a band. Lyrics went, you fancy a drink, just the one. Oh, that's not the one I'm thinking. Don't even know what that is. It's the Levelers. 84. I believe. If I've got that wrong, my memory is not serving me well at the tender age of 43. 
One on the M40. Ah, I got it right. There you go. I just double checked there. 60. Well, we are going to see some great walk ons tomorrow. We're going to have the game by Motorhead. We're going to have Hillbilly Rock. One on the M40. Was Shania Twain. Ah, I see where you went. That's still the one. One hundred. Uh -huh. Jim, you require one hundred and twenty-one. Everybody loves a one-two-one, especially when you get that beautiful first dart. Double fourteen for a twelve-dart break. Ninety-three. James, you require one hundred and seventeen. This one is marginally easier. Double top. Yeah, it has He's playing the first some round. fabulous stuff James all of a sudden. Way more likely to hit these things than he was over the course of the week. Something is Second clicked. Second back is Jim the throw first. Game on. Is this the right time of the week to click? You'd probably have to say yes. Now, Jim McEwen has won twice. With us One on the this year, won the Champion of Champions event back in July. He won a Champions Week a little bit earlier in the year. 54. He has banked a lot of cash with us so far this season. He would love to win week one, to have a guaranteed invite back in the early point of 2023. One on the end, 35. Of course, on the proviso that he doesn't get a tour card because there are people who can play before Christmas to get a tour card and ultimately they wouldn't be allowed to come back. But it's nice to have that guarantee if you don't get the tour card. 96. going to be a celebration on Saturday night. A celebration for Robert Owen because it will be his last 81. Saturday Jimmy night with us. 147. Looking for, I believe, his sixth title in the last couple of seasons. Tomorrow will be his last Saturday with us. 92. Will it be the ideal send-off or will somebody take the title ahead of him? Twenty-eight, Jim. You require fifty-five. Just doing a bit of a follow-through mimic there, just trying to get things right for the next leg. You feel? Uh, Jimmy Mack is coming back for double top. Yeah, that's game short in the second line. Two fifteen dollars to start this one off. One for Jim, one for James. Third lock is James to throw first. Game on. I wonder if it says James on Jim's birth certificate. One of the greatest things about the late great Dave Lanning, when he would introduce a player, One he would always use their full name. First maximum of this match. And James got the only maximum when they played yesterday. Or should I say One on Thursday night? 40. Because it's now Saturday morning. But yeah, Dave Lanning, when he was introducing players, he would always use their full name. I'll never forget. He used to always introduce Rocky as... And here he is, Andrew Jenkins. I loved that. I still do. And nobody does it. And I guarantee you, if Dave Lanning was still around commentating, he would introduce Johnny Clayton as Jonathan Clayton. Just a classy thing to do, really. He'd probably call 95. Jim McEwen James McEwen. Unless, of course, it is Jim on his birth certificate. One 
100. James, you require 146. Pearl with a 146. And options for this. It's a bit of a coin flip these days, really, as to whether you go for the two travel 19s 16. or the 60. Magic number for Jim was 136 or 140. 94. James, you require 86. For everybody who's joined us tonight and in the early hours of the morning on Sporty Stuff TV, we really do appreciate your company. We hope you can join us later on Saturday. 61. Jim, and you we'll require both of these 82. Guys once again. And to everybody on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel internationally, thank you for tuning in whatever time it is, wherever you are. Double top. Yeah, that's and it's another 15 data. That's Jim three of them now. So let's get leg four underway. And he sends four another 15. Jim to throw first. Probably all Game better on. is incoming. McEwen with a 2-1 lead, averaging 105. And you got to see, this is a bit weird. One on the end, because Matt 21. Edgar and I said that Jim was toast. He was gassed. He was out of energy. But for some reason, 100. an injection maybe of urgency in possibly losing his spot on Saturday night has woken him up. And he started playing properly again. And that you have to admire. One on an M40. At the conclusion of this game, I'll go up to the, the gantry with Henry and talk about what's happened tonight and who's in what group. 60. And that will give us a little bit more insight into the possibilities of Saturday night's action. Whatever you're doing on Saturday night, 16. make sure you can join us to see who is the first person through to the Stage 2 Finals. We will have Super Series darts for you all the way through to the 18th of December, at which point we will take a couple 16. of weeks off to allow you to enjoy the Christmas period and the World Championship. And then we will return on the 2nd of January, which will give you enough time to get over your hangover on New Year's Day. 60. One hundred. Jim, you require one hundred and twenty. Both fifty percent on the double so far in the match. And I said that a fifteen dart it was coming. One hundred. I was wrong, not for the first time in my life. Sixty. Jim, you require twenty. Double ten for the worst leg of the match so far. Yeah, that's game but short Jim in the fourth. Doesn't line. think so. He's Jim got a three-one lead. A win in this match for Jim. And it will make Fifth sure that he's James in second first. place Game on. in the table. Hurrell would have to settle for third, which I'm pretty sure would put him in the same group as Scott Walters. 54. We'll have that confirmed by the end of the night. Well, one person who's not going to be talking to me today is Rhys Colley. Because Newcastle are playing Aston Villa this afternoon. One of them, 40. That's going to make for an interesting conversation later. Sixty-five. I don't think James Hurrell cares who's in his group. All he's got to do is win one game by a very large margin to make his way 43. through that group. The way it works is two games per group. If you are on two points with a plus leg difference after those two games, you are going to be through. That's just the way it works. 
83. Fear them all else. Just win them both and give yourself the throw in the semi finals. That's the best way through. Jim McEwen now looks like he could throw all night long. Do a full Lionel Richie. Yeah, he's found something, hasn't he? He was really flagging, really struggling. 100. Jim, you require 138. Really game. And then before him, this one. He's found the best he's found all week. Trouble 20 leaves tops with Hurrell not on a finish. 98. He's looked super sharp in this game. Look at what he's doing. 104, and considering how good he was in his game with Richard North at 95. This is what you call One on the, name, 40. the perfect Jim, you acceleration. 40. All he's got to do is just plonk one dart in tops. Game, shot, and, he gets and it a match. Up Jim McEwen. With the very first dart, Jim McEwen, we said he looked tired. We said he looked gassed. Said he was running on fumes, and then he found some incredible darts. He wrapped the last game up. Played very, very well against Richard North from the middle part of that, getting his average up to a 95. And he's carried that on with his best performance of the week so far, 104 average against James Hurrell, a 4-1 victory. And that is some very positive signs going into tomorrow night's final. Jim Well, that is some way to round off the evening's action, isn't it? Superb from Jim McEwen. We were wondering what he would have had left after the marathon that's been the last nine days. And that's a pretty emphatic answer, isn't it? Well, the answers he came up with in the last 50% of his games in this group. Uh, incredible, really. In game number five, number six, you thought, hang on a minute, I don't think he's going to make it. Just like... Uh, was it Jonathan Brownlee in the, in the triathlon? Yeah. He's just flagging at the end and he gets a bit of help, but he helped himself there. That performance was great against Northey, but that was even better. And he thoroughly deserves his place on Saturday night now. It was interesting because we said at the top of the show, or midway through the show, that it was a little bit nervy at times, but then you saw Harrell and McEwen make real sprints towards the line to seal their spots into tomorrow night's final. Do you think that maybe the exposure to long tournament days throughout 2022 have helped them uh, with their engine, with the endurance aspect, because they have saved their best stuff for the end. Two massive, massive averages uh, from these two guys, just giving them that little bit of an injection of confidence going into what will be a very competitive last day of the week. We'll show you how tomorrow's final is going to look in terms of the groups in just a second, but a quick word for Scott Walters, because after everything that happened last time, I think there's going to be a few question marks going into tonight, being in and around the position to progress. And he spoke on the balcony about how things are changing for him in his career over the last few months. Yeah, I think the ghost has definitely been laid to rest here in the former church. But there you see the groups, Owen, Graham and McEwen. That's going to be interesting. But Reese Colley, Scott Walters, and I was right in commentary to see that James Hurrell in third position in the Group B table now goes to play mm. in that second group. So there you go. It's going to be really interesting. It's interesting because I was having a look at those slides during that final match, and my thinking and recollection was, and I don't know if you agree, was whichever way it goes, whoever's placed where, they're two incredibly tough groups, and, and groups you can't really call. Not really. I, I, I still think that Robert Owen is a, a rightful favourite. And I know that at this point in the week, we always tend to laud the person who won in Group A, but Robert Owen's got so much experience. And if you think about Jim McEwen, for instance, we started to worry about his endurance aspect. He'll play his 10th consecutive day tomorrow. He'll have a really good sleep, hopefully, tonight to get ready for that. But Owen is so good at pacing himself to get things done on Saturday night. He's the most prolific winner, and I think he's going to do it again. Have you ever seen a week here at the Super Series where all three groups have been won as emphatically as they have done this week? Not that I can recall off the top of my, top of my head, but I'll, I'll do my stats digging overnight and I'll see what I can find out. Are you making some more predictions tomorrow as well? 
I'll try. <laughs> This man is going to be back tomorrow evening. I hope you can join us as well. It is the finals of week one of stage two here at the Modus Super Series. And our Super Six are locked in as Scott tops a lot here in Group B. The Modus Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.